better officiate. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Colin Furley Sports and Fitness Center. I'm Morgan Stanton, joined alongside by Dave Jackson. We're here for the semifinal girls division one hockey as the Rutland La Raiders, number four ranked team, come in to take on the BFA Comets, ranked number one. Dave, why don't you take us through uh, tonight and what you're expecting to see out of uh, both teams? Right now, the Comets are going to come at us, at the, the Raiders, with a, a steady dose of three lines, possibly dipping into the fourth line to wear them down. The Raiders have one solid line of Cooley, Crossman, and uh, Hubert. Uh, they're going to see a lot of ice time today, but I, I got a feeling the Comets are just going to run them out of legs. Now, uh, what's the game plan uh, as far as getting to McDermott in net for uh, for the Raiders? Same same as always. Get the puck down deep, cycle, throw the puck on net. Uh, they're they're going to have a lot of girls coming in, four checking and playing off the rebound. And now we were talking before uh, about Montgomery and net for uh, the Comets. What's going to be the defensive mindset uh, with her and net? McKenna's going to come out high. She takes away the whole net. She's a big, a big, uh, quick skater. Um, she does give up a little bit of the rebounds, but the players are there. Great D, they're going to clear for her, but she takes away the net on that initial shot real well. And she's got a great glove. And uh, the the mantra in the in the locker room, much the same as all season, right? Pound the puck, start that cycle, and get shots on net. Exactly, and just just support each other. And you you the back checking, the forward checking, they're just they're all over the ice. There's no set position. You can call them a right wing or left wing. They're all over the ice. They're going to go where they're needed. And for the Raiders, uh, you talked about that top line of Crossman, Cooley, and Hubert. What do they have to do to make sure that they get to Montgomery tonight? They've got to move the puck. They got to use each other. They skate well. They get open. Keep their heads up, find each other, and move the puck. If they try to skate the puck themselves, they're going to end up in the corner. Defense will take care of it from there. So this semifinal matchup uh, between these two, we're expecting a good game here tonight, and uh, and we're hoping uh, that the Comets are going to get to McDermott early, and obviously that's the plan. We're going to kick it right down for the starting lineups uh, for both teams. So stay with us. We'll be right back with the start of action here in the first period. Welcome team. Drummond is going to pass from Peyton and Henry Reynolds. 
So we are just about set and ready for action here in the first period. You were just commenting how you love that rendition of the girls singing the national anthem. They get louder and clearer every day. I mean, they, they, it's a beautiful song down there. It's nice to hear. You don't always hear it from the players on the ice or any sporting event, really. And uh, you can tell that those girls really into this game so far and into each other they're such a great team uh, it shows on the ice we we see we saw it all last game uh when they beat the kingdom blades they they find each other on the ice all oh, the time yeah. they, they love to celebrate molly smith does have to work on her celly though oh yeah it, it was a little weak well there's time right there's yeah, always there's time. time her dad's put a lot of money into her shop let's see if we can work on that celly now well, it is freezing in here. I'm still cold. I got in here, and I swear it was warmer at MVU the other night in Highgate. Uh, my toes, my fingers, everything. I'm uh, I'm hoping that the action starts to heat up soon because I, I need a little pick-me-up. Looking around the rink right now, you see a lot of faces. No masks. It's nice, isn't it? It's very nice. And on the ice, too. Look at the girls. No masks. Yeah. You can actually see them smiling. Now, the hard part is that without the mask, they've got to make sure they have their mouth guard in. <laughs> 15 minutes on the clock, and we are ready to go here in this first period semifinal game. Zemanik's going to get the puck down deep, all the way in behind McDermott. First one there is Grattan. She'll push it around. Puck taken away by Crossman. She's going to skate up ice, looking up for Cooley. She's got her going through the center of the ice. She gains the blue line. She's got Huber going towards the center of the net. It's up top to Studley. Studley will get that puck down deep. Smith, the first one there. Poke check down behind the net. Battle along the end boards. Taken away there by Jarvis. She throws that one up. Bliss able to get it, but not out of the zone. And the Comets have to recollect. Zemanic wheels around inside her own zone. She'll skate out to center ice. She gains the red line, she'll gain the blue line. She's all alone, she takes a shot. That one whistles wide, but it's held in at the point by Fersing. Fersing battling hard on the sideboard. Kept in there by Needleman. Fersing now makes a move, takes a shot. That one stick down, and the rebound goes all the way out and pushed down the ice for an icing. So we're going to get our first stoppage of play. 13.50 left, first period. 
Both teams just feeling each other out right now, but the Comets getting a couple shots close to McDermott. The, uh, the only thing kept his man in goal uh, shot from not going to the net, she missed him that. That Absolutely, was a yeah. that, was that, that whistle just past the post, and uh, McDermott had no shot on it. Puck's at the point now, Horrigan. Weak shot there, another shot by Fersing. That one went wide. Down in the corner, Fersing now has it. She gets it up to Horrigan. Horrigan trying to chip it off the board, but is pushed out to center ice and gathered and turned right back up ice. Onside play. Fersing's gonna be the first one down to get it. Fersing battling down there with Vittori. Puck comes out here, Kennedy has it on her stick, she'll throw it up all the way down, and it's going to make it all the way for an icing. So already uh, the Raiders having a hard time exiting their zone, and all they can do is ice the puck. Yeah. Great individual effort there in Reese Clayton, taking that from her own blue line, blue line all the way in. A couple near tackles. And uh, she, she uh, was able to kick it to her stick yeah. to uh, prevent the offside, which is a good heads up play. Face off, one back to the point. Thrown back in by Lamis. And the Raiders trying to chip out of their own zone. Here comes Cooley. Cooley has it on her stick. She'll take a shot all the way around. Good body on the outside, preventing Crossman from picking up that rebound. BFA is going to ice the puck and it's going to go all the way down. So we're going to get a face off coming back down to the left, to the right of Montgomery. There was a great chance right there. Rowland had a crossman came down crossman, in, yep. in the zone with the puck and she had Cooley and Hubert out there. She's got to look for them to get that goal. Uh, they're, they're trailing wide open. But a good job by Smith pushing her to the outside, not allowing her to no even room. look towards the front of the net. Face off one back by Kennedy. Shot good save there by Montgomery. That shot came off the stick of Studley. Right out in front, Kennedy had her stick tied up. Studley takes a shot, hits a body in front, and can be skated out by Gratton. Gratton's gonna come out to center ice. She's got the blue line, pressured on the outside by Lindstone. Gratton still with it, looks out in front, good pass, but nobody's home. Oregon's gonna have to skate after this one. Ooh, almost some miscommunication there as Montgomery had to make a save. Turnover there, it's on the stick of Studley. She throws it out in front. BFA got to be careful with the puck in front of Montgomery. Gratton skates out. She's got Bliss to her right, looking to give it up. Good pass there, but even better defense on the backside by Crossman. Bliss trying to start the cycle. It's chipped along by Lindstone. She has it on her stick. She'll try to reverse ice. Jarvis has it looking out in front. Nobody's there. And the puck goes out to neutral ice. Needleman inside her own zone with 11.42 left first period. Puck thrown in deep by Frades, blocked at the line, and chipped right back out by Rutland. Now it's on the stick of Cooley. She tries to make a move around one, not able to do it, and Zamanik will try to skate out of her own zone. Pressured there by Hubert. Battle at neutral ice. Now it can be taken by Shea. Shea's got some time to work. Almost turns the puck over there. Clayton has it on her stick. She'll get it down deep and chase. Patorti's gonna be the first one there. She reverses ice, and it's all the way at the point, held in by Zamanik. She'll get the puck down deep. First one there is Fersing. Fersing battling down hard. Almost centering pass, but Rutland comes away with it. Cooley has it on her stick. She'll get the puck down deep and head off for a line change. 10.54 left, first period. Shea gets the puck up, turnover at the blue line, and thrown off of a leg. Clayton throws that one up and not can't find anybody across the center of the ice. Needleman interfered with, but not able to. Uh, oh, we got. Yeah, we got a penalty on Needleman. She uh, she got her stick in a bad place, but she was actually interfered with before she went through the uh, on that previous play when she was trying to go up. But Needleman's going to no, get a penalty here too for. That's, that's Zemanic. Or Zemanic. I'm sorry. I thought it should gone the other way. I thought the I thought the same thing for uh, an interference, right? Yeah. Yeah. I thought I thought Sophie had been interfered on. And it went the other way. Well, so Zemanik's two minutes for tripping. So we're gonna see uh, we're gonna see the Raiders' first opportunity on the power play. Needleman throws that one up to the point. It's held in by Lindstone. Pucks at the point now for Hubert. She gets it down. Cooley has it on her stick. Wheeling around. First one there is Lindstone. Pressured 
by the Comets. Lindstone trying to get the puck down deep. Horgan battling there with Cooley. Horgan takes it away from her, tries to reverse ice, and it's thrown up, but not out of the zone. Battle along the sideboards. Horgan has it on her stick. She'll throw it out to center ice and all the way down with a minute 25 left on the power play. Good Stutely. Good forecheck on the penalty kill, absolutely. Puck taken there by Lindstone. She gets it up to Cooley. Cooley's got some room to work. She gains the blue line. She's got Crossman cut into the center of the net. Glove down, not held, but saved by Montgomery. Slapper from the slot goes wide. Needleman trying to throw it out. It's held in by Lindstone. Lindstone with some good pressure by Montaigne. That puck is offside, so BFA will be able to throw it all the way down the ice and relieve the pressure. 45 seconds left on the penalty to Zmanic. 9.16 left. Reed taking it away down in the corner. Battle along the sideboards. Good job on the penalty kill by Reed. Stalling the Rutland attack. Puck taken out and skated by Hubert. She'll get the puck down deep. And Shea will be the first one there. 25 seconds left on the penalty. Chipped up and out by Reed. And good job by Reed again. Really pressuring the puck handler at, at neutral ice. Smith trying to clear that puck up. One of the officials in the, the body knocked it down at the red line. Sometimes, you know, they play, they get it on the defense too. Yeah. Especially when there's three of them out there, you know? I, know. I, I had commented on that before. They're not, I don't think the girls are used to seeing three officials, so that one's usually not standing there. The one that we thought was gonna call interference was making a move and the guy out of our vision had yeah, the far, Yeah, the far end of the ice. So five seconds left on this manic penalty. 8.37 left first period. Faceoff's gonna be to the right of McDermott. Jarvis wins the draw back. Horgan has it on her stick. She'll take a shot that hit a leg. Gratton's at the point. She makes a move around one to the slot. Jarvis trying to get it down. Bliss was wide open in front of the net. Not able to get it to her. Skated out and here come the Raiders. Cooley has it on her stick. She's pressured on the outside. Penalty is over. So we're back to even strength. Taken by Crossman. Crossman around the outside of the net. Up to Lindstone, back to Crossman. Crossman backhanded, not able to get there, and it skated out by Jarvis. Jarvis had a long lead pass looking for Bliss cutting across the center of the ice, but here come the Comets. Jarvis has it on her stick, she's around the outside. Down around the outside of the net, had Gratton momentarily, but couldn't find the pass, and the Comets have to recollect inside their own zone. 7.50 left first period. Bliss coming in onside, tried to drop it there for Gratton, but it's taken away by Crossman. Crossman across the red line, she gains the blue line. She'll take a shot, glove down, rebound given up, but good job by Zemanic to clear the zone. Possible two on one on the turnover there. Bliss just has to chip it up and not out. Good, help, good hold at the line by Lindstone as she gets it down deep. 7.27 left first period. Dangerous turnover there, shot on net. And I believe Montgomery got Blocked away by Zemanic with a glove hand. Good, good defense. So they are helping out their, their goaltender early yeah. in this one. They gotta be careful with the puck. Possible two on one developing. Jarvis over to Bliss, just out of her reach. That would have been a great opportunity for those two. Just ahead of Bliss' stick. Lindstone battling down deep with Jarvis. Lindstone comes away with it, turn over there. Jarvis has it, tries to stuff it home. And the rebound goes behind the net. Lindstone throws it up. Good job by Sophie Zemanic, pinching down from the point and keeping the puck in there for the Comets. Puck squirts out to center ice. It's taken there. D to D pass. Zemanic will backhand it in and come to the bench for a change. 7.34 left, first period, 0 0 score. Puck reversed ice. Now it's on the stick of Lindstone. She'll chip it up. Needleman gets it over there to Frades. Frades has it, Just looking for a centering pass. Nobody in front. Puck skated out, Cooley with a nice pass to Kennedy. Kennedy will get that puck down deep and head to the bench for a change. Quick line changes for both teams uh, so far in this first period. Yeah, keeping the lights fresh for that one. Battle at the blue line, it's gonna go back inside off the stick of Huber. Puck's at center ice, taken there by Crossman. Crossman harassed at center ice and it's taken by Cooley. Cooley makes a move at the blue line, now it's on Huber's stick. She's gonna take a shot, good save by Montgomery, and a good defense on the backside by Smith, clearing out the front of the net. Puck's at the point now, Crossman, she'll take a shot, that one went wide. 
Needleman has it on her stick and a little bit of room to skate. She's gonna get the blue line and not get all the way to the red line. So that puck is gonna go all the way down for an icing. 5.35 left, first period. Face is gonna come back down to the right of Montgomery. Rutland's coming out firing. They're moving, they're fast. They're all over the comments right now. The comments gotta take a breath here and try to make something happen, reset themselves. They're tying up everything in the center of the ice, which is what you wanna do with a team that's as fast as BFA. Yeah, great neutral, neutral zone trap. Shea's gonna be the first one there. She'll throw it up, turned over there to Kennedy. Kennedy, right out in front, but Zemanic has it on her stick. Possible three on two, four on two developing. Zemanic has it on her stick, trying to cut the D. She's got it, shot! Score! Zemanic, end to end, splitting the defense and puts it up high on McDermott. BFA leads one to nothing. She had two girls all over her across the blue line, still managed to break through and just buried it in the top corner. I was expecting her to pass. No. You, I saw you the whole time. You were I, you were just nodding your head. You can tell, Sophie's had enough, Sophie's had enough. Yep. She had to make sure that she was set a statement early. Putting the game on her shoulders there, putting the comments up, one to nothing, and Crossman's gonna come right back. Trying to do the same thing, takes a shot, good save by Montgomery, she got the pad on it. We're gonna get a penalty coming up. I don't know who it's gonna go with, who it's gonna go on, it could go on either of them. Both of them were there. Number eight, yeah, Seneca it's gonna Lamis. Be, Lamis is gonna go to the box two minutes for a hook. And uh, and to Crossman's credit, she got the puck down and skated well towards the net and drew that penalty. Yeah, and I, and I really didn't see a long enough time for a hook to be called, but hey, we're not rest. Nope, that's why we're up here. That's right, they get paid the big bucks. <laughs> Wheeling around inside the zone. Studley takes a shot, that one went wide. Now it's at the point. Lindstone has it, she's trying to get it puck. She's trying to get it deep. She's pressured there by Jarvis. Good job by Jarvis, killing off a little bit of that penalty. Puck's behind the net, taken away by Hubert. Hubert gets the puck up to Studley. Studley at the point, she'll get it over to Hubert. Back up top, she'll take a shot. Good block by Gratt. And that gets out of the zone. Giving up her body on that one oh, to prevent the shot. Up. Absolutely, she took that right above the skate. Bad spot. Puck skated in, Cooley has it on her stick. Good stick check by Gratton, she's doing it all. Snap shot, hit a body in front and didn't make it to the net. Crossman has it on her stick, she's wheeling towards the front of the net. She still got it on her stick. Tries to get the puck back, now it's a foot race. Lindstone. Able to beat Jarvis to the puck, and Rutland turns right back up ice. Miscommunication there, Gratton will take it away. She gains the red line, she gains the blue line. Good she night. cuts to the front of the net. Shot, score! A short-handed goal, and the conference lead, two to nothing. As soon as, as, soon as Gratton took that step inside, we are sailing all yep, the way from yep. the blue line in. She picked that pass off at the far blue line, made a nice move through center ice, and a short-handed goal with 49 seconds left. On the penalty, and 3.58 left here in the, in the first period. You got Jarvis and Gratton applying pressure in a six foot radius. No, you're not gonna get away from Gratton did that all herself. Yeah. She blocked a shot, she poke checked another one at the blue line, and she really killed that penalty all by herself. Battle inside the defensive zone here for the comments. It's taken away by Reed. Reed will skate up to center ice. She's got the blue line. She'll get it down deep. Dangerous save there, but a good job by Reed getting that puck on net. 30 seconds left in the power play for the Raiders. 3.30 left, first period. Reed making a move inside her own zone. She's got it up to Bliss. Bliss is gonna turn up ice, she's got the blue line. Cuts to the center of the ice, takes a shot, good save by McDermott, kicking that one aside. Puck thrown around, Needleman pitches down. She's got it on her stick. She's down below the red line, has that one taken away by Lindstone. Lindstone still has it. She'll push the pace. She's got the blue line. Lindstone makes a move around one, takes a shot. That shot went wide. Penalty has expired. Three minutes left, first period. Battle along the side. Now Needleman down below the red line. Battle in there. Puck thrown out in front. Bliss chipped that one up and out. Not out of the zone. Oregon cutting through the center of the ice. Has her stick lifted, stays with it. Now it's on the stick of Studley. She just chips it up, and now Zmanic can start the offensive for BFA. But it's turned right back by Crossman. She's trying to make a move around one. Good defense on the backside by Horgan, but she's going to get a penalty. 
Shot by Studley, lets that one go. That one hit Horrigan in front. As soon as they touch up. Going for a high stick. High stick. I tell you, Rowan Horrigan did all she could on yep. Crossman and did tighter her up. I, I thought it was clean. The only thing I could have saw was a interference. I didn't see the high. I didn't see the stick come up. So I, maybe when Crossman tried to cross over yep. Rowan's body, her stick might have made contact with her head. So so far the Raiders 0 for 2 on the power play, giving up a shorthanded goal, and this will be their third opportunity. We'll see if they can punch one in to cut the lead in half. So 2:24 left first period, two minute penalty to kill off for the Comets. Face off one back. Smith has it on her stick. She'll chip it up. It's held in by Studley. Wheeling around, here's Lin, Here's Kennedy. Kennedy gets it over to Hubert. It's at the point. Good shot by Lindstone, but it hit a, a, sk a skate in front. And the Raiders have to recollect. Zamanic has it on her stick, trying to clear the zone. Not able to do it, but out comes Fersing. Fersing, she'll get the puck down deep and kill off some of that penalty. 154 left, first period, two to nothing lead for the Comets. Huber skating up ice. She's got three. She's got two with her. She'll gain the blue line. Gets it over to Cooley. Cooley takes a shot. That one went high and wide. Puck chipped up and out by Clayton. And the Raiders have to recollect. 110 left on the penalty. 130 left in the period. Puck's at neutral ice. Taken by Studley. Now it's on the stick of Cooley. And it's thrown right back in. Cooley trying to get on the loose puck, and she does. Cooley wheels around inside the offensive zone. She'll get it down to Crossman. Crossman down below the red line, looking for somebody out in front. Good shot there by Crossman, and an even better save by Montgomery, keeping this game at two to nothing. 40 seconds left in the penalty, and 60 seconds left in the period. Pucks the center ice, Crossman has it. She makes a move around one, not able to collect her own pass, and BFA throws it right back down. Pressure by Ray Alexander. Doing a good job on that four check, not allowing an easy break out of the zone. Needleman throws that one on net. McDermott didn't see it, didn't see the rebound, but she's able to cover it up. So 42 seconds left first period, 19 seconds left in the penalty kill for BFA. Rutland is throwing a lot of shots on Montgomery early. Kenneth's doing a great job standing up to him. Faceoff's gonna be inside the Rutland end. Jarvis has it on her stick. Has it taken away and thrown all the way down the ice by Wood. It's going to make it all the way down for an icing. So 33 seconds left and nine seconds left in the penalty. They are, they are doing a good job putting, uh, putting shots on, on Montgomery, and she has been moving well yeah. across the crease. Yes, she's been doing a great job putting her body in front of the shots. Jarvis wins the drawback. Quick shot by Grattan, not able to get much on it, so it goes off into the corner. Hubert throws it around, puck still low. Jarvis has it on her stick. Needleman calling for it at the point. Needleman takes a shot, that one went wide, more of a pass there to Grattan, but it's taken by Grattan. Grattan looking out in front, she had Bliss. Now it can be skated up by Hubert. Addison Hubert gains the red line, making a move around Zamanic. No call on that. That one surprises me. That <laughs> that that looked worse than the other some of the other penalties that were called, but nonetheless, that's the horn for the end of the first period. BFA with a strong period, two breakaway goals, one shorthanded, two to nothing lead for the Comets. Right now, the Comets have, they, they should feel fortunate to have a two nothing lead right now because Rutland's had the pressure in our end for most of the game. The ice is definitely tilted in Rutland's favor. And uh, something that you know I. I didn't see last game, maybe, uh, and you're probably not used to seeing, is it's kind of sloppy in the defensive end. They've turned over the puck kind of in front of Montgomery quite a bit more than they usually do. It, it happens, and they it, they will correct it. It doesn't happen for the whole game, and this will be a great time in, inside the locker room. The coaches will address it and let them know. You know, it's it's you're right. They're throwing some passes where they shouldn't. They're not maintaining possession, losing it, turning it over on the, the dangerous areas and Rutland's capitalizing. They're jumping on it and turn a lot of those into shots. To that point, and, and we said it earlier, they're clogging up the middle of the ice, not allowing, because we're used to seeing those one, two passes through the neutral ice, and they're into the offensive zone, and it's a shot on net. They've got, like, Hubert's got the ability to back check and keep up with our fast skaters. And yep. she, she really sh uh, closes off a lot of space fast. 
Uh, we got to start coming across the ice, maybe get away from Hubert, use the off wing, and, and chip the boards. Chip it up off the glass and skate to it. So now you're, if you're Rutland, you're down two to nothing in this first period. What's the message coming back out for the second? Keep your foot on the gas. Just keep shooting, keep shooting, keep shooting. Go to the net. Right now they've had a lot of shots on the net. No one's there to pick up the rebound. They need to get someone to follow through on that rebound. And just as you predicted, you know, those rebounds are there, but the defense on the backside clearing the front of the net very well. The, I mean, if the D's not there, you've got a, a back check and wing, center. Someone's there yep. in a yellow jersey getting rid of it, or gold jersey, excuse me. So we want to uh, we want to take a minute to thank our sponsors, Northwestern Orthopedics, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, JC Image, Corporate Outfitters, and Handy Toyota. And just a reminder, if your business would like to sponsor Northwest Access TV sports coverage, call 802-782-8676. And something that we uh, want to tease too is the, the shirts for uh, the player of the game sponsored by uh, Corporate Outfitters. We are always excited about this to honor one of the, you know, a star performance out on the ice. So stay Look, tuned for that. Looks good on a guy in the booth too. <laughs> well, I remember you were going to try to get me to wear it, but I, is that still a large? Uh, we got one large, but I'll tell you. If you yeah, put you the said large. It, oh, that's a medium. We're not, that's if you not put even, the large on, that's not I'll even put close. the medium on. So after one period of play, the Comets lead the Raiders 2 to nothing. We'll be back for the second period of action.
So after one period of play, if you're just joining us, the Comets are leading the Raiders two to nothing, and we'll see uh, if that top line of the Raiders can come out. Uh, if they got their legs underneath them after that first period, they were out there a lot. Yeah, and, and I was told, uh, you know, not a professional scouting report, but pretty strong one from Rutland said they're going to try to skate them 75% of the game. I heard that too. Uh, I think you were telling me that before the, the start of the game, and uh, they got it in them. Yeah. They're all young girls. I mean, they're in shape. They're skating really well. They didn't look like they are tired at all given that period. Well, we are just about ready for the second period of play. And uh, we'll see here if the Rutland uh, Raiders can come back and put one on goal quick. Uh, they had quite a few shots in the first period, so uh, they did their job as far as what their game plan was to begin with. Yeah, they put a lot of shots on, on McKenna, and McKenna handled it, defense handled it. Let's see if we can uh, slow down their roll a little bit. We got first line against first line on the start. Base off, one back by the Commons. Pressure on the outside by Crossman. They go hard into the boards. Jarvis still has it, battling down deep. Grattan gets in the mix. Bliss has it on the weak side. Passing out in front had Grattan momentarily, but that puck goes harmlessly to the side. Jarvis throws that one on net. Bliss has it on her stick. Looking for someone to pass to. Cuts to the front of the net and went off a skate. Jarvis throws it around, looking for Grattan. Battle along the back boards. Good job by Rutland, keeping them to the outside. Coming away as Jarvis takes a shot. That one right into the belly of McDermott, and she'll hold on, no rebound given up. Almost a minute gone here in this first, in the second period. I'd like to see them look back on the blue line. We've got uh, Molly Smith, big shot, uh -huh. wide open a few times. You know, Jarvis comes out of the corner. That's what I thought she was going to do, and then she can cut to the center of the ice. Get it, get it back to the point, go to the net, two after the rebound. Layton's going to take the draw here against Kennedy. She wins the drawback. Oregon throws that one on that. It's off of a, stick, of a stick in front and goes off into the corner. Bucks at the point with Needleman. She'll take a shot. That one blocked down. Hit Kennedy and goes behind the net. It's down low. Clayton has it on her stick. Looking for somebody to pass to. Leaves it there for Horrigan. Good stick check by Lindstone. And she'll try to get out of the zone. But it's picked off at the point by Clayton momentarily. Rutland has to re in their own end and it's chipped up and out and here comes Lindstone. Lindstone cross ice pass. She's got Wood. Wood takes a shot. That one went off to the side. Clayton chipping to the point. It's taken there by Petorti. She'll get the puck down deep. Gathered in. Down low by Fersing. She reverses ice. Frady's has it on her stick. Good job by Clayton getting it out to center ice. But it's stopped by Petorti. She'll throw it right back down in. 13 minutes left, second period. Oregon battling there. Puck's taken around by Lamus. Bumped off by Crossman. Puck down low. Centering pass, nobody there, and he'd be skated out by Petorti. Good job by Zemanic, not allowing Crossman to get free. Needleman has to collect inside her own zone with 12.45 left, second period. Needleman wheels around, misses Montaigne. Puck goes back in, uh, inside Raider territory. Lynn Stone behind the net. She chips the puck up to Hugo. Chipped down deep by Lamus. Battle down, Alexander up to the top. Shea has it at the point. She'll take a shot that hit a skate in front. Lamus was there looking for the tip, but it hit her, her skate instead. And here come the Raiders. Stooley across the blue line. Checked there by Zamanic. And now Shea behind her own net. She makes it move around one, she'll skate out of her own end. Throwing the puck up, looking for Montaigne, missed everybody. And it will make it down just barely for an icy. Almost three minutes gone, second period. The faceoff's gonna come back down to the right. And that shot by Shea hit square and Seneca loses his shit. Yes, it hit. You felt that. She's supposed to use her stick. Yeah, it's moving. Face off down deep. Crossman's gonna take the draw here against Jarvis. Jarvis, good job, good job winning yet another draw, but it's taken by Cooley. Cooley looking out in front, good defense by Jarvis. Oh, 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 
Here we go. Check back out front. Here comes Grattan. Grattan's got the blue line. Harassed by two Raiders, and they get the better of that exchange. Jarvis backhands that one around. It can be gathered by McKenna Huber. Pucks along the side. Good pinch down by Smith. Grattan out front. She's going to draw a penalty here. So BFA is going to go on the power play. Jarvis down behind the net. Chipped up by Huber, and there's the whistle. I thought Grattan was going to have a little breakaway, but uh, McKenna, uh, Addie Huber and uh, Crossman really did a great job. So McKenna Huber's going to go to the box. That's going to be two minutes for a hook. So now we get to see that potent power play uh, for the for the Comets. You know, it's going to be on the end of their shift, but he's keeping them out here. Bratton, Jarvis, and Bliss going to be out there with Zemanik and Smith. Jarvis taking the draw, loses that one, and the Raiders able to dump it all the way down. Zemanik in a foot race here. She'll be the first one there. Zemanik over to Smith. She makes a move at her own blue line. She's got Grattan. Grattan catches the pass. She's got the blue line. Pressured on the outside by Lindstone. Grattan up top. Zemanik. She'll take a slap shot. That one whistled wide. She was looking for Bliss's stick. That one backhanded out to center ice, gathered by Smith. She'll leave it there for Zemanik. He turns the puck over momentarily and is thrown right back down by Wood. 10.50 left, second period, a minute 20 left on the Huber penalty. Grattan skating out of her own zone. She gets the puck over to Smith. Smith gains the blue line. She's got Bliss cutting towards the front. Smith puts the brakes on. Looking for somebody out in front. She's got Grattan. Zemanic winding up, taking a shot. Good save by McDermott. Backhanded shot. It's loose in the crease. And the Raider is able to come out unscathed. Skating up, Cooley makes a move around one. She's around the outside, good defense. Up top to Hubert. Hubert can't catch the pass cleanly. And she's harassed there. Puck taken by Grattan. She gets it over to Jarvis. Jarvis at center right, she's got the blue line. Bliss is behind her, she takes a shot. That went off the leg of Lindstone. Lindstone the first one there. She'll come away with the puck. She chips it up off the glass with 30 seconds left in the penalty. 9.55 left second period. Horgan inside her own zone, looking cross ice. Clayton has it, two to her left, trying to make a move. Oregon now has it, she skates down below the red line. She's got Lamus in front, looking to give it up to her. Now it's on the stick of Alexander who cuts behind the net. Alexander trading places there, Clayton has it on her stick. Looking out in front, good defense, keeping her to the outside. Clayton still has it, she'll get the puck down deep. Lamus gonna pick it up behind the net. Looking for somebody. She's got Oregon at the point. Oregon takes a shot. That one hit a stick in front. And Crossman will dump it up and out and all the way down the ice. Foot race here. Cooley, first one there. Penalty has expired. We're back to even strength. Cooley has it on her stick inside the offensive zone. She'll get it to the point. She misses Crossman. And Crossman has to collect the center ice. Nine minutes left, second period. BFA still leading two to nothing. Lamus skates up ice. She gains the blue line, gets it in just wide of McDermott. Puck taken there by Studley. She gets the puck up, but it's held in by Clayton. It's at the point, Zemanic. She'll take a wide shot, hit Kennedy in the back of the leg, and that one hurt a little bit. Studley getting the puck up to Crossman. She skates up ice. Over to Wood. Wood has it on her stick, kept to the outside by Needleman. She tries to thread a pass to the front, not able to get there. Needleman has it behind the net. She'll reverse ice. Chipped up and out, and here comes Alexander. Amber Pocket. Amber Pocket has it on her stick. She's pressured down deep. Pocket throws it up to Reed. Reed to the point. Zemanic takes a shot, tip down in front. That one just went wide. Great tip by Liz Kucher. Hubert down below the red line. She's pressured by Kucher. Kucher puts her to the ice. No call. Battle between Reed and Studley. Reed has the puck uh, pinned against the boards. It's up to Zemanic. Zemanic, D to D pass to Shea. Shea, wide open lane, takes a shot. That one just whistled wide of the upper post. Shea's Reed gonna have had a tip on oh that. Oh my goodness, man, she just missed the upper corner of that net. Shea collects inside her own zone, trying to catch Rutland in a line change. 
And right back the other way comes Bliss. Bliss kept to the outside, Crossman loses an edge. Jarvis has it on her stick. She's battling down hard. She's below the net. Gets it up to the point to Zemanic. Zemanic, she'll take a shot. That one hit a leg in front. Lindstone, Lindstone coming up ice. She loses an edge. And Zemanic throws it right back down. 7-10 left, second period. Comet still leading 2 to nothing. Breaking out of their own zone, Rutland. Dangerous in front of the net. Jarvis all over the loose puck. And she gets a shot on goal. And McDermott has to cover up with 6.59 left second period. You rewind about uh, 45 seconds to a minute ago. And Liz Kuchar in front missing a tip. If you want to see the roof come off of this ring, you watch Liz Kuchar get a goal. This place is going to go crazy. She did a good job parking herself in front of McDermott. She just got the wrong side of the stick on it. Smith. Up to the point, Needleman keeps it in. She'll get the puck down deep. First one there is gonna be Gratton. Gratton lets it go by her. Shift around, and here possible two on one coming. Penalty gonna be, on, I believe, on number 16, Eric Pator, get tied up with Bliss. So Pator's gonna go to the box, two minutes for interference. Faceoff's gonna go back down to the right of McDermott. And uh, 0 for 1 so far, but with some pretty good opportunities on that first power play. And uh, Rutland really snuck away with a, a good penalty kill on that first one because they didn't have their best group out there against our number one, and they still stalled them. Jarvis wins the drop back to the point. Gratton has it on her stick. Gratton making a nice little move. She'll dump it down behind. Jarvis has it. Over to Smith. Smith takes a shot. Good block in front by Wood. Giving up the body on that one, not allowing the shot to go through. Gratton has it on her stick inside the offensive zone. She's pushed to the outside by Hubert. Jarvis has it on her stick. Looking out in front, tip in front by Bliss. And she just missed getting the good part of the stick on it. Gratton cuts towards the front of the net. Takes a shot, that's loose down in front. Shot, score! Jarvis on the doorstep, she puts in the garbage goal. Power play goal, three to nothing. Perfect, perfect position by Bree Jarvis coming from behind the net. It went by Bliss, Bliss took a whack at it and Jarvis did not miss. Credit goes to Gratton, she spun on her defender, got to the front of the net, got the initial shot. Good defense really on her, not allowing a hard shot to go through, but Jarvis just on the backside yeah. puts it home. Tenacious, tenacious, tenacious. The girls just don't quit. Three to nothing lead here for the Comets on a power play goal. The refs are doing a little soda coup to figure out who's uh, who got the points there. Well, it was definitely Gratton got the assist, but right back comes Cooley. Up is Hubert. Down low to Cooley. Cooley out front. Crossman takes a shot. Good save by Montgomery. She kicks that one off to the side. Good quick shot by Crossman. Good one-time opportunity, and that's their best opportunity of the period so far. Skated up ice. Here comes Fersing. Fersing looking for Clayton. On the backside, Frady's has it. Momentarily on the stick, Oregon throws it around. Crossman gets it up ice. Cooley's going to collect at center ice. She makes a move around once she's got the blue line. One to beat. Oregon's on the backside. Backhanded pass. Nobody on the backside. Puck thrown up. Hubert, she'll throw it down deep. Cooley battling there with Oregon. We're going to have a penalty coming up. High sticking. It's going to go to BFA, so Rutland's going to go on the power play. And who are we getting here? It looks like it might be Reese. Reese Clayton. It appears to be that way. I couldn't see the infraction in the corner. Clayton's gonna go to the box, two minutes high sticking. So, so far, uh, Rutland 0 for three. They really need this one here, uh, being down three to nothing. Four strong skaters on a penalty kill for BFA with Fersing, Frady, Smith, and... Frady's and wins that draw immediately, as you called her name. BFA able to clear the puck, killing off the first 10 seconds of this penalty. Good pressure by Frady's. It's been all night. That that forecheck, whether they're on the on the penalty kill or not, is just unrelenting. Puck's down low. Cooley skates behind her own net. She's pressured on the outside by Fersing. Fersing lifts her stick, but Cooley stays with it. She gets the puck down deep. Zemanic's going to be the first one there behind her own net. She's pressured by Cooley. Battle ensues. Puck taken away by Smith. Passes to herself off the board, and she'll have it. She'll dump it all the way down the ice. So the first 30 seconds of this penalty has been killed off successfully. 4.45 left, second period. A minute 15 left in the penalty. 
Puck up ice, just missing Hubert, but she'll be the first one there. Montaigne keeping her to the outside, trying to cut in. Good defense by Zamanik, not allowing, not allowing Hubert to oh. cut in. She, she almost muffed that one. Well, it's, when the goalie went down on a puck, did not quite time it well, and she uh, was a little bit concerned where it was. Better, better just you just know keep still. the egg warm and keep the egg warm and just sit on it. Absolutely. So we got a. Uh, Lamus and uh, Montaigne out on a uh, penalty kill for the forwards now. We'll see if Lamus can win another draw. It's at the point. Taken away here by Abatel. She'll get the puck up to Wood. Wood gains the blue line. She's kept to the outside by Smith. Centering pass, not able to get through. And here comes Montaigne. She's tripped up, but keeps the puck. Kept to the outside, her shot goes wide. Lamus is gonna be the first one there. Not able to pin it against the boards, and Abatel gets it up, looking for Wood. Smith will be the first one there. She collects that neutral ice, four minutes left, second period. Puck taken by Kennedy. She's got the blue line, looking to set up the offense. She'll take a quick shot. That one went off of Smith, and squirts out to neutral ice. Collected here by McKenna Hubert. She's pressured immediately and coughs the puck up. Montaigne doing a good job on the penalty kill, tying up neutral ice. Hubert gets the puck down deep with 3.40 left, second period. Just 10 seconds left on the Clayton penalty. Zamanik throws that one all the way up and down. And Reed is gonna be the first one there, coming right off the bench. Inadvertent now, whistle, that's an inadvertent whistle. He called the icing, it was an inadvertent whistle. You had Faith Reed coming on the ice on yep. a line change, and Zamanik just threw the, the puck down. A one on old break, and she could pull yep. the puck out of the corner, but uh, inadvertent call on the icing. So, with four seconds left on the penalty to Clayton, faceoff's gonna be at neutral ice. Alexander's gonna take the draw here against Crossman. Faceoff one back by Alexander. Oregon has it. The penalty has expired, we're back to even strength. Battle at the blue line. It's taken away here by Alexander. Alexander looking across the center of the ice, not able to find anybody, but the puck doesn't come out. Crossman skating up ice. She's got Cooley to her right, two on one. Passes it, good save by Montgomery and the rebound taken away by Reed. Reed's got some numbers. She's got Alexander through the center of the ice. Back to Reed. She takes a shot. That one whistles wide. It's at the point now. Shea pinching down. She keeps it inside the zone. Faith. Reed over to the point. Shea has it taken away from her momentarily. That puck came out. And we're going to get an offside. The faceoff's going to come outside the Rutland territory with 2.49 left. Great, great save by Montgomery on that two on one. Crossman put the puck, you know, she played Crossman as a shooter, but as soon as Crossman fed the pass over to Cooley, McKenna really transitioned well, centered up on that. Good block. I want to touch on something that you said too in the pregame. She does cut off the entire net and she cuts off that angle so well, not allowing uh, that opportunity to come to fruition. Bliss had it on her stick momentarily. Jarvis still battling hard at the hash. Zamanik has it. She'll start to cycle down low. Gratton has it on her stick. She's looking towards the point, but harassed immediately by two Raiders. It's still down in the corner. Jarvis comes away with it. She's got Bliss out in front. Backhanded shot, whistles wide, and Jarvis will be the first one there. Up to the point, Needleman has it. She takes a shot. That one hit a leg in front. Zamanik now has it. Zamanik, she'll let that one go. Cross that hit check. Gratton down in front. Cross check on McKenna Huber in the back of Gratton. Yep, absolutely. So Grat Gratton went down to the ice. Huber put her down, so it's gonna be it's gonna be two minutes for cross checking. Interference is the official call. So 209 left second period. And uh, once again, this pa this penalty or this power play unit is one for two so far. Yeah, this will be our second group out right now, but it's a strong group. They move the puck well. Clayton taking the draw. She wins it back to Needleman. Needleman is at the point, looking to set it up. Tip in front, Alexander got her stick on it, but it went off into the corner. Puck taken by Studley. She's looking to clear the zone, but it's held in by Oregon. Studley throws that one up, and it's on the stick of Cooley now. Cooley gains the blue line. She cuts to the center of the ice, takes a shot, sticked aside easily by Montgomery. Cooley down in the corner. She makes a move around one. She still has it on the backhand. Cooley. Battle in there with Needleman. Needleman's gotta be careful with that stick. And now it's taken away by Hubert. Hubert cuts to the center of the ice. Her shot goes wide. Alexander inside her own zone. 
She'll throw it around to Needleman. 127 left, thir second period. A minute 17 left on the penalty. Clayton. Oh, yeah. Just. I weren't sure about it. Yeah. Clayton, Clayton came in across the line, and Alexander was just a touch ahead of the play. She kind of stick handled at the blue line and, and didn't go in really with yeah. a, a whole lot of momentum. So it you just. Got, you got to cross that line. Yep. You, you got two players. Uh, that was a, and that, that. Was a, that, that could have been a three on two there developing yeah. uh, right at the blue line. Jarvis is going to win the draw back. Bliss has it on her stick. She wheels around to center ice. Pressured by, Whit, pressured by Wood. Bliss still has it on her stick. She's around the outside. She goes down behind the net. Leaves it there for Gratton. They start the cycle. Gratton trading places there with Jarvis. Jarvis has it on her stick. She'll throw it around. Gratton is there. And she's below the red line. Gratton looking up top. Switches places with Zamanic. Zamanic cutting to the front. Good save. Good save. Quick whistle, I thought. After McDermott made the initial save. A lot of, lot of action going on with Bliss and uh, Studman in front of the net. Yeah, and they're being talked to right now about it. Bliss is getting in position, and they don't want her in that area, and she's not moving. Yeah, they're, they're both doing their jobs. Yep, absolutely. Good hard hockey play. Yeah. 50 seconds left. Second period, 42 seconds left on the McKenna Hubert minor. Crossman's going to take the draw here against Jarvis. Jarvis wins another draw. Now it's on Gratton's stick. She gets it up top. Zamanik is going to take a shot. Nice. Drill, score! Tip, drill, goal! And that's another power play goal. Four to nothing. BFA. That person we just mentioned, Caroline Bliss, banking her spot right in front of that net. Beautiful tip, five hole off Zamanik's shot. Sophie put a beautiful shot. Low, hard. Yep. Caroline, all she had to do was just snap it down with her stick. Yep, absolutely. So a tip goal. On a power play, that's two for three on the power play on the night for the Comets. 43 seconds left in the second period. It's a four to nothing lead. Nice shot, nice tip. Base off at center ice. Stalemate on the draw. Clayton trying to come away with it. Puck taken there by Crossman. She has it in her skates. She kicks it to herself and she'll chase after it. Held to the outside by Horrigan. Crossman. Has it taken away from her. Clayton makes a nice move inside the defensive end and she'll skate out. Puck coming to Fursing. She gets the blue line and she'll make a move down towards the bottom of the zone. Clayton has it on her stick. Looking for some help out front. Pressured. And is chipped up and out. Off the stick of Cooley. Shea turning the puck over. Cooley has Hubert in center. Shot. Good save by Montgomery. Point blank shot once again. And Montgomery keeping the shutout at four to nothing. I mean, that was two quality players coming on her. McKenna played them perfectly. I mean, she came out again, top of the crease, no net, butterfly, ate that puck up. That's that's at least the the second or third opportunity that I can think of where it was that that quick pass to the center of the ice, the two on one break, and she's been equal to it every single time. You got you got Cooley and you got Huber, you got Crossman. Those three girls are extremely fast. You turn the puck over your red line, you better be ready. Yep. And McKenna stood up for the team right there. She kept that puck out of the net. I mean, that should have been a goal. Great All move. All three of them should have been a goal. The, the three opportunities that they've had where it was that two-on-one that I was just talking about, all three of those should have been in the back of the net, and she's made sprawling saves yeah. every single time. Yeah. She's doing a great job. Great job making the save, and that's all you can ask for her. Defense is there to clean up the rest. And uh, she's, she's keeping a goose egg on that board. So if you're Luke Coffey, this second period, is this – it, was it the turnaround that you were expecting out of this team? Well, they, they gained in some areas, lost in others. And our, our central, the, the neutral zone was, was weak, I think. We've had a lot of turnovers in that neutral zone. Offensively, we're getting to their net a lot harder, better shots. Uh, you know, we're getting the puck in the net. That second power play goal to make it four to nothing was impressive, and you, you touched on it. Zemanic knew exactly what she was doing. She kept the puck low on the ice, yeah. and... And Bliss was just right there. She was a quick, flat, snapshot, low. It was going five hole. It was a little high. Goalie probably would have had it, and Bliss just snapped it down, and it just hit the ice and sucked in. So it, two power play goals uh, to this point. So that power play unit is clicking. And on the other side, Rutland 0 for 4 uh, when they get the advantage. All year, it seems to be whenever we're down a, a skater, it's almost like our power play's out there. It's, it, gives, it gives our girls more room to create. 
And if he puts out the, the, the four, uh, four of our first line girls, they're going to make a lot of, lot of damage in the other end. Absolutely. It, it's, it's, it's fun to watch, but it's really not a penalty kill. I, I call it another power play. I, I, I agree with you. The four check on it is, is incredible, and it was something that you told me to watch for last game, and they're showing me more of it tonight. And then today, uh, Frady's uh, on, a, on a penalty kill, and the four check she had, I mean, and this is coming off our, our third line. You know, the, the girls just, they, they all can step up and assume any different roles. So after two periods of play, 30 minutes in the book, the Comets lead the Raiders four to nothing. We will be right back with the start of the third period, so don't go anywhere.
So 15 minutes left here at the Collins Burley Sports and Fitness Center. BFA leading four to nothing. I believe you said uh, you just had an update on the other game. Uh, Spalvin versus Essex right now in, in Barry. You got uh, Spalvin leading four to three in the third period right now over Essex. So definitely a game to keep your, your eyes on that one too, on that score. One goal lead with a Tanner Taylor Seneca on the other side is not enough. She's lightning in a bottle. Look at the fans, the fans are getting in and we got a little mini wave going. The, the mom's all wearing her jerseys. Now, you were just singing this song before uh, before we came back. I mean, I you might as well keep going. I, yeah, it's, I really don't want to lose any viewership right now. <laughs> But you know, I, I've done a lot of karaoke, and I think people like that. But uh, not uh, it's usually it's, and and same with me too. But it's usually late at night, and uh, there's some kind of uh, influence that makes me sound a little better. I, I am a lip sync champ, you know. <laughs> with great balls of fire. Face off, one is center ice by BFA. Smith will get it down deep. Collected in the back by Studley. Studley pressured immediately by Bliss. Now it's on the stick of Hubert. She wheels around inside her own zone. Gratton's going to collect down in the corner. She gets the puck up to Bliss. Bliss gets it back down, trying to start the cycle with Gratton. Inadvertent hook there. Now it's at the point with Smith. She takes a shot blocked down in front by Studley and thrown right back down the ice. So 30 seconds into this third period, we're going to get our first whistle. Faceoff's going to come back down inside Rutland territory. Already. BFA jumping on uh, every loose puck, getting the puck to the point and getting those shots off um, early in this third period. Uh, they're keeping the foot on the gas. Yeah, it, it, you know, your top line start out against each other and they're, there's no give right now. We'll see if Rutland can put one on the board as they're trying to break out of their own zone with Crossman. She has that one taken away by Frades. Needleman elects to skate backwards and play defense. Crossman. Bumping Clayton off the puck momentarily, but Clay Clayton recollects at center ice. Now it's on the stick of Cooley. Cross ice pass. Nobody there. Needleman gains the red line. She'll get it down deep. Chasing after the puck. Clayton battling there with Huber. Puck thrown up and out by McKenna Hubert, but held in at the line by Montaigne. Pucks at center ice. Skated out by Wood. Wood gains the blue line. Takes a shot. Another good save by Montgomery. Rebound goes behind the red line. Oregon reverses ice. She skates up, loses the puck. And kind of a, Lindstone kind of lost her stick there as she was trying to dump that puck I'm not back sure down she deep. Was trying to do a fake, a fake slap and decoy to go around. Goes down inside the Raider territory. Good forecheck down low by Montaigne. And out skates Kennedy. Kennedy has center ice. She's got the blue line. She makes a move around Zamanic. Zamanic keeping her to the outside. Good defense. Harassing her and is taken away by Alexander. Alexander to center ice. She's got Lamus to her right. Alexander still with the puck around the outside. She's down below the goal. Gets it over to Montaigne. Montaigne centering pass. And now it's on the stick of Kennedy. She chips it up and out. And Shea has to collect at center ice. Zamanic turning immediately up ice. She gains the blue line. She's kept to the outside. Tries to chip one to the front of the net, but it's held off by Lindstone. Coming out is Crossman. She makes a nice move around one, and she's got the red line. Tripped up in the skates of Cooley, and Zamanic trying to go right back the other end. Cooley gains the blue line. She's got it over to Crossman. Crossman, forehand shot. Good block down by Shea, not allowing that shot to get on Montgomery. Crossman gets it over there to Cooley. Cooley bumped down low, and she comes away with the puck. Cooley has it, cutting towards the center of the ice. She gets it up to Studley. Studley, D to D pass over to Hubert. She'll get the puck down deep. Cooley has it on her stick. Taken away there by Lamus. She throws it up and around. Where can be gathered by Gratton. Gratton holding off a check. Gains the blue line. Throws it down deep. She's still hustling after it. And Crossman turns around. Gratton's going to get a penalty here. A hustle penalty on that one. Is going to go for a trip. But back coming the other way is Cooley. Cooley on the outside takes a shot off of Hubert. And collected at center ice. Another good save by Montgomery. Studley has it on her stick. Gets it over to Hubert. Hubert cutting back inside her own zone. Waiting for the touch up, and there it is. Bliss touches up. So Gratton's going to go to the box. Two minutes for a trip. So we're going to see the fifth opportunity here for Rutland on the, on the power play. 11.33 remaining in the third. 
faceoff is going to come back down to the right of Montgomery, and Montgomery uh, really doing a good job not allowing those rebounds to go right in front of her. She's kind of kicking them off to the side. Faceoff one back by the Raiders. Studley has it at the point. Looking to set something up, nobody in front. She takes a shot, easy save there for Montgomery. She sees that one all the way from the point. Pulled that in and held on to her. Shot right into the chest, no rebound given up. Reed is gonna take the draw here for BFA. Kennedy wins it back. Puck thrown down, Kennedy has it on her stick. And Smith will throw it all the way back down the ice. 15 seconds are already gone in the penalty to Grattan. Reed has it on her stick down low in the corner. Doing a good job pinning it up against the boards, killing some time. She's pressured there by Studley. Puck taken away there and skated out by Wood. Wood chips it up off the boards. The Manic's at the point. She keeps it in. But out comes Wood. Wood giving the puck up to Avatel. She throws the puck in. Smith loses an edge. But cleared out by the Comets. Studley passes it over to Cooley. Cooley around the outside of Zemanic. Gives it out in front. One time shot. Misses the net. Crossman takes a shot, that one off the outside of the cage. Cooley collects the rebound, looking for somebody to pass to, but it's taken there and thrown out by Paquette and all the way down the ice. 10 and a half minutes left, third period, just under a minute left in the penalty. Puck skated around. Hubert had it momentarily in her skates, but it goes right by hers. The will throw it right back down and killing off more time. We're not generating much on the power play. They can't get out of their own zone right no. now. And again, that four check, absolutely suffocating. As Jarvis is down there working hard, keeping the puck away from Crossman. She does come out with it, and she gets the puck over to Addison Huber. Over the blue line, she takes a shot. Good save by Montgomery. Good job by Smith on the backside. And here comes Jarvis. She cuts up ice. She's got the blue line. She'll take a slapper from the wing. That one hit off McKenna Hubert and goes off into the corner. Jarvis still with it, throwing it out front to Bliss. It's at the point. Zemanic has it. Zemanic takes a shot, that one whistles wide. Crossman, inside her own zone, can't collect. Needleman, backhands that one down, but Crossman comes right, right back up ice. She's got the red line. Crossman leaves it there. Chipped back in, a little miscommunication, but they go to the bench for a uh, line change. Gratton, fresh out of the box. She's got the blue line, skating hard around the outside. Skating around Hubert around the net, trying to get it out front to Jarvis, not able to get it there. Good defense by Petorti. Torty knocked down on the play. Jarvis has it. It's at the point with Needleman. Needleman takes a shot, looking for a tip out in front. That shot went wide. Good Bliss good gonna get there. Not able to hold the zone is Shea, and they'll throw it right back out. And Wood trying to collect for the Raiders. Abatel, she'll gain the blue line. Good stick check at the blue line by Clayton. Possible two on one. Gratton's gonna take it herself. Gratton around the outside of Petorti. Takes a shot, good save by McDermott. She'll hold on to the, McDermott, she'll hold on to that one. 8.44 left third period. BFA still leading four to nothing. Little shout out to uh, Sasa's U10 girls team. They got the team, uh, the green team and gold team will play each other for the state championship Saturday. Very cool. Just shows you the depth of uh, St. Albans girls hockey. And a very bright future indeed coming up uh, for this area. As For as much as you've been talking to me about it, Cutting right back up, Ice Fursing has it. She's kept to the outside, and she gets the point up to Horrigan. Horrigan has it. She'll get it back down to Fursing. Looking for Frady's out front. Fursing has it, she takes a shot, SCORE! Fursing with an awkward angle shot, and it goes right over the shoulder of McDermott. That's the fifth goal for the Comets. 8.25 left, third period. She leaned into that stick, that had some snap. Awesome, awesome work by the Comets on that goal. Five to nothing, uh, and no signs of stopping. No, they gotta keep it running. Back to our uh, U10 girls team here. We got one little girl, uh, goalie, Haven Brace, who sits and watches every one of our broadcasts, and listens. So Haven, good luck Saturday. Keep your stick on the ice and your eyes on the puck. Battle at neutral ice. Cooley battling there for the Raiders. It goes all the way back down to Studley. Studley has it inside the zone, she turns it over there to Lamus, and it's skated right back up by Alexander. Montaigne gathers the puck at neutral ice, coming in onside, throws it down deep. Crossman will be there for the Raiders. Eight minutes left, third period. She loses it there, Alexander has it on her stick. She cuts to the front of the ice, her shot was blocked down. Puck thrown by the Raiders, and a foot race ensues. Smith. 
for BFA. Cooley there for the Raiders. She comes around as Smith loses an edge. Montaigne is there for BFA. Smith wheels around down below the net, puts the brakes on as she's being harassed by two Raiders. Turn over there. Grossman has it. She had Cooley on the backside, but good defense by Smith not able to allowing the pass to go through. Lamus throws that one out. It's in the skates of Alexander, and Lamus gathers the rebound again. She'll throw it down deep and come off for a change. 7-15 left third period. Pressure by Liz Kucher, number 12. Puck's on the stick of Storms. She gets it over to Reed. Reed bottled up at the blue line, and now comes Abatel. Abatel take a slapper from the wing. That one was blocked down and goes wide. Storms throws that one around. It's on the stick of Zemanic. Zemanic skating up ice, backhanded pass. Had Storms, went off her, her skate. And coming right back is Abatel. Good job by Zemanic, taking the puck away from her as she throws it up to Reed. Reed will backhand that puck down deep. But again, Lindstone not allowing that puck to go all the way into the zone. Lindstone in over the blue line. She's all alone, loses an edge there, turns it over. Richard has it on her stick. Richard poking it over to Reed. Reed threw that one on and net. Backhanded opportunity and a good save by McDermott who was way out of position, but still able to make the, the save. Caught no man's land. She did a good job of getting the pad out there and not yes. allowing that opportunity to go back and go in the back of the net. Very fortunate how that puck there. Richard at center ice. Sniper just took referee down on the other side of the ice. <laughs> I got you, Mark. I, so. <laughs> I saw it too. I just wasn't going to say anything. You're the one that had to say it. Well, he, he's all alone over there. <laughs> puck goes back to Zemanic. She gathers inside her own zone at the blue line. Wheels a backhanded pass, not able to hit anybody. And Bliss is going to go to the box two minutes for tripping as soon as there's a touch up. Crossman has it on her stick, has it taken away from hers. Manic will touch up. So with 541 left, Bliss is going to go to the box for trip. Bliss is hitting the, the score sheet all over the box today. Yeah, it should, like, you can't have just goals and assists on the, you know what I mean? You got to have penalties. You, you got to have the dirty ones too. Puts a little bit of a color in your profile. I think she just wanted to hear her name again over the, the loud wow, that's like I know when I played, I wanted to get the penalty so that I, they could say my name. It didn't happen very often. Oh, her, so Her dad was just like that. <laughs> Face off one back by the Raiders. At the point, slap shot from Lindstone. She didn't get everything on it. Hubert's in the corner. She gets it over to Cooley. Cooley down below the line. She's on a backhand. Up top to Lindstone. Lindstone over to Studley. She'll take a shot. That one went off the outside of the cage. Needleman throws it up. Not out of the zone. Studley pinching down. She keeps it in there for the Raiders. Needleman, D to D pass over to Shea. Shea inside her own defensive end. She'll throw it up and out. The Raiders have to tag up. Shea throws that one all the way down the ice, but Studley at the blue line turns it over there to Jarvis. Jarvis wheels back around in neutral ice, looking for somebody to pass to. She'll backhand it down deep with five minutes left, third period, and a minute 10 left on the penalty. Great pressure by Jody, Jody Gratton, and she is all over the ice. Skating out of her own zone is Addison Hubert. She still has the puck on her stick. Are we going no to call. Nope, nope, no, no call. Arms. Puck set neutral ice. It's skated up by Lindstone. She throws one in deep. Had her shot blocked. And you can't say enough about uh, these girls keeping the shots to the outside and getting their stick in, not allowing that shot to get on Montgomery. I, I don't think McKenna's seen more than three or four shots from the in front. You know, they've all come from the side and they just. Battle at neutral ice. Fersing takes a high stick and stays with the puck. Now it's taken by Kennedy. She wheels around inside her own defensive end with four minutes left, third period. Turnover at the point. Clayton had it momentarily, thrown down by Fersing. Hubert looking for Kennedy across the center of the ice, not able to find her. Now Kennedy collects, harassed on the backside, and a good pressure by Fersing as she throws that one down the ice. I believe we have another inadvertent icing. I think so, yeah. Okay. And one, one more quick shout out to our girls hockey program. The U14 Sasa girls are playing in the state championship tomorrow. And it's, they're in every year. Those girls are strong. It's a great outlook coming into our common team. We'll definitely uh, be looking uh, towards this program for many years to come. Crossman comes in across the line and snuffed out 
that relentless uh, defense. And the penalty is over. 3.30 left, third period. Puck's down in the corner. It's taken around by Addison Hubert. She'll skate around her own net. Turn over there, Kucher getting involved there for the Comets. Puck's at the point. Chips up into the bench, so we're gonna stop it to play with 3.20 left third period. So with the, with the season we've had this year for Liz Kucher, her senior year, she's, she's been uh, injured for most of the season. She's only been on the ice probably for three games. And uh, she's, she's a trooper, she's our Rudy. And we really wanna see her get, wanna get one on the board for her. We'll see if we can get one here in the next uh, three minutes and 20 seconds as it's on her stick right now. Shot towards the net. Paquette had an opportunity at it. Puck's down low, Lindstrom behind her own net. She'll look to skate out, loses an edge there, gets right back up. Now Smith pinching down, she'll keep it in there for the Comets. Lynn Stone, pressured down deep by Paquette. Oregon pinching down, and Paquette comes away with, with the puck. Lynn Stone, through center ice, gets it over to Abatel. Abatel throws that one on net, and Montgomery just sticks that one to the side. Turn over there, Kennedy has it on her stick. Another good defense by Horrigan, not allowing that, not allowing a strong shot to get on Montgomery. Smith inside her own defensive end. She wheels around, 2.30 left, third period. Skating up ice here is Frady's. She makes a move, gets the blue line, gets the puck deep and come to the bench for a change. 2.20 left. Grossman skating out of her own defensive end. Makes a move around one. Pressure there by Montaigne, she gains the blue line. Crossman still with the puck, pushed to the outside by Smith. Crossman trying to chip it to herself. Battling down there hard with Lamus and Smith. Coming back for the puck now is Alexander as she wheels behind her own net. She'll skate up ice and throw it all the way down. This one will go on McDermott. And that's a couple of other opportunities as it's getting a little chippy down there. Well, it, uh, I think it's frustration now. Well, I'm a defenseman. Yeah, you protect your goalie. You don't, if someone snows your goalie, yep. you, just, you just don't, you don't allow it. And I think that's, I don't think it was a, an intentional snow, but it happened. So you, know, you take care of your goalie. We've got a final on that Spalding Essex game. Spalding is the winner, 4-3. So they will be uh, at Gutterson Fieldhouse on Monday for the state championship. Barring an extreme uh, turn of circumstances here, they'll be facing the Comets. Coming away here is Addison Hubert. She gains the blue line, makes a nice move around one. Diving sticks, stick shot. And Montgomery preserving the stud out. Here comes Zemanic. Zemanic in across the blue line, trying to make a move around Studley. Now it's on the stick of Hubert. And, and that's no, yeah, we're gonna get a call here. As Zemanic just getting a little. Well, see Zemanic does that rush, gets to the other blue line, loses it through Studley and is still able to come back and catch Huber on the far blue line on the back check. Yep. But she's a little aggressive yep. on her on yep. diving under the arms. I think that was a frustration. I think so too. And uh, you know, at the end of the game, you don't like to see a penalty like that, but nonetheless, here we are. Uh, a minute 18 left third period. Rutland's gonna have their sixth opportunity on the power play. Face off one back by BFA. Shea will dig that one around the boards. Now it's taken by Reed. She chips it up to herself and she'll race around the outside of Studley. Reed has her pocket pick there and it's skated down deep. Studley will spin inside her own defensive end. Has it on her stick. Pressured by one. Reed, good job at the blue line. Not allowing Studley to get over the blue line easily. Stick check there, Addison Hubert inside the offensive zone. She's got Cooley in front, gives it to her. One time shot, not able to get the good part of the stick on it. And it's thrown right back out by BFA. 44 seconds left, third period. Good job by Ella Shea tying up on Cooley. Huber inside the zone. She takes a shot, another nice save by Montgomery. She sticks that one to the side. Cooley cutting to the front. Needleman puts her to the ice. And Montgomery will cover up that one. 28 seconds left, five to nothing BFA. Minute 10 on a penalty with the Zemanic. Faceoff's gonna be right to the right of that big backstop back there, and she has been impressive this entire game, Montgomery. She's gonna make our next job real easy. She's made our next job real easy. I think so too. I, like we were talking, what, the end of the first period or close to? Yeah. Jarvis throws that one up, she's got Gratton. Gratton around the outside of Lindstone. Lindstone's gonna get there first as she throws it up to Abatel. 
Abatel loses the handle, but now it's on the stick of Kennedy. Kennedy trying to get in over the blue line, not able to do it. Studley will just throw that one on, on net. Blocked down by Jarvis. Jarvis looking for Grattan, cutting across the middle of the ice. And with five seconds left, the state championship game is now set as BFA wins five to nothing in a dominant, dominant performance. They'll be heading to the gut. That's off. Like, I think that's okay though at this point. At this point. At this point. At this point. And, and we're not gonna we're not gonna call uh, you know delay a game penalty on that or no, anything no. for you know them intentionally doing it. But he, hats off to this Rutland Raiders team too because they never gave up. Uh, uh, this is the best game Rutland's gave the Comets this year. And like you said, they never gave up. There was no loss of legs or energy. They were flying yeah. the whole game. And uh, and that uh, you know cross that top line of Crossman, Cooley, and Huber really did a great job. Um, containing the the neutral zone. Uh, <laughs> got some tripping going on. on the uh, their legs don't want to stop moving. <laughs> Happy feet right there. Hey, John LeClaire used to do that on his same ice many, many times. <laughs> Coach made him sit down every time he called us in. Is that the, the was it an intentional slew foot? No, he oh. just could not stand on his own two feet. Like, guy, <laughs> guy, you know, he made millions in the NHL, but. Uh, he did, yeah, he did. He did all right for himself. Just a little, yeah. But great, a great game by the Rutland Raiders. Come up here, long drive. Uh, they, they put out a great effort, and they no quit the whole game. This, uh, and it's it's nice to see this too. You know, all the the friendships that are made throughout this sport, um, congratulating each other. You know, no hard feelings. It's it's just it's nice to see. See a lot of these girls here. I know my daughter will be playing with three of them uh, the weekend, next weekend, in the, the tournament in Maine. So. There's a lot of cross connection with a lot of these organizations. Girls hockey in Vermont is not a big crowd, but they're well, they're just a well group crowd. They all they all look after each other. They'll play hard when they're against each other, but they'll hug after the games. So I believe uh, the the moment that I've been waiting for, and I'm sure that everybody's been waiting for, uh, our player of the game sponsored by Corporate Outfitters. Um, Dave, why don't you go ahead and tell them who we're going to give it to tonight? Today's player of the game goes to McKenna Montgomery. Excellent job in net there for every time we needed her. I mean, she had uh, some awesome saves on some two-on-ones, quick moves off the shooter to the, I mean, the passer to the shooter, controlled the game well, kept her comments flying. That shouldn't be any surprise, and uh, and really, it goes back to that uh, those two or three opportunities where Cooley and Crossman and Huber. They had that two-on-one opportunity. She slid so well getting the pad on the ice and not allowing that puck in the back of the net. Yeah, a smooth, seamless slide, in control. Puck got kicked to a spot that's not going to hurt her. Rutland scores on those chances. The whole game changes. You know, their energy changes, and they start coming at you harder. But McKenna did a great job holding them at bay. And uh, she'll probably get another look. I'm pretty sure they're going to move forward with her in the finals. She's done her job. So uh, tonight you celebrate. But you got to get focused for the state championship game. You're going to play against Spalding. Yeah, the girls are. Uh, they know what they got in front of them. Spalding is a tough team. They're going to come at you with two very strong lines, and they've got two goaltenders that can, either one can plug or play. Um, they're they're a hard goalie to get a puck by. So you know every goal counts. You can't just give up one or two in your end and think you're going to make them back the other way. Spalding's a very tough team. They're good defense. A lot of their offense comes out of their defense. But uh, Becca McKelvey there, she's a big, strong, I mean, she's probably your size, and she's in front of the net. You're not moving her. She's got great hands. The Comets got a real big task ahead of them. We beat them twice this year, close games. Very hard to win three times. So we'll be looking forward to that uh, Monday uh, for the state championship. Uh, coming up next, don't go anywhere because we have the boys, the Bob Whites, are going to be taking on Essex, and that's going to be, the house is going to be rocking for this one. And all i got to tell you right now, I, I tell my, I ask every kid I've co coached in baseball, hockey, whatever, what are you born to do? And they all tell me the same thing, beat Essex. And I tell you, it's, it's going to be a great rivalry. Essex, BFA, you, you can't ask for a better group. Um, and you know this place is going to be packed and rocking, so if, you know, you've got a good parking spot, I'd stay. I, I do have a good parking spot, but I, I do have a long ride back to New York tonight, so it's uh, I think I might stay for the first period, see if I can get uh, a little bit of action in, but I do have a long drive back to New York tonight. It's been a great pleasure for me to work with you the last two games, and uh, I, I think you're, this is a great great thing for you. you uh, 
you're born for this. I, I appreciate that, and it's it's been a great time with you and and everybody here at Northwest Access. And uh, I do want to take one more opportunity though, and I want to thank our sponsors uh, because they're the ones that make this all happen, bringing all the the coverage to you at home, uh, so that you can follow these teams. Uh, Northwestern Orthopedics, Corporate Outfitters, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, JC Image, and Handy Toyota. Uh, you can't say enough about those sponsors who allow this to happen. Yeah, and, and Northwest Access. Yep. Thank and you. So stay tuned because Essex uh, comes in here and they're going to take on the Bob Whites next. So don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss that. Coach Duclon, Toby Duclon's last game at the complex. 32 years, folks. Think, are there are the ticket prices as high as it is for uh, Mike Krzyzewski? Well, I know when I put my money down on the counter before I came in, and I did pay, um, it was $2 more than the last time. Okay. So, so, so their ticket master is... As long as I stay on this side of the door, I won't have to pay again. <laughs> so for Dave Jackson, I'm Morgan Stanton. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Take care. Great job, Morgan. That was a little bit more fluid.
too. Yeah, I know. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Live here at the Collins Pro Sports Complex. Game two of a doubleheader. It's your VPA Division I boys. Semi-final action with an opportunity to go to Gutterson Fieldhouse Friday, March 11th. And Jason, before I introduce the team, I'm gonna say this hands down. You can argue us on Facebook all day. You talk about hockey, baseball, football, soccer, whatever it may be, this is the best rivalry in both boys and girls sports in the state of Vermont, and that's the Essex Hornets coming in, facing the boys BFA Bob Whites for a chance to go to Gutterson. Essex currently 14-4-2, number three as a seeding going as, as far as a VPA standing, and BFA number two at 16-3. Bliss, I called you at lunchtime. I said, I feel like I'm playing tonight. <laughs> I know I'm not. I talked to a couple of the boys, tried getting them jacked up, but what an atmosphere. What a ticket we have in front of us here tonight. Yeah, big time, Cam. I know you said your brother was texting about 7 a.m. this morning. <laughs> Obviously, his uh, nerves are running high. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what a rivalry game. This has always been a rivalry between BFA and Essex for I can't even know, you know when in the past, but these two teams, both very good skating teams. BFA, a deeper team probably than this Essex team. But this Essex team, very skilled team. Yeah. Uh, they got two, three great lines. Very dangerous on the power play. They got Prim. They got Sincata. They got all those guys. Hemingway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we, the list goes on. Yeah. This is a well-coached team by Chris Line. Yep. Um, an ex-coach of mine. But, yeah, this is going to be a phenomenal game. We're going to have a phenomenal crowd. And what a better game to have at home, Cam. Yeah, no, we were walking in, backdoor entrance, almost like a VIP, and we ran into the Essex coaching staff. And uh, uh, my old roommate, Tyler Peckham, now assistant coach working with line, uh, pulled me aside and, and I said to him, both of us kind of watching that game on YouTube, that double overtime game, I looked, I looked at him, I said, you know what? I said, no one wanted to watch BFA play Spalding. Right. Everybody wanted this matchup. We talked it about in the quarterfinals. Luckily, the boys got out to a hot start, so we could talk about it a little bit early. Uh, but this, uh, folks, this is going to be as good as it gets. Uh, it, it reminds me of three years ago when we played Rice in the semifinals right. uh, with a bid to go to the championship. Of course, I think Stowe upset Essex last year, that year, setting up that matchup. Um, but but what a treat we have for you here tonight. Yeah, you couldn't have a better spot in the rink than up here in the, our viewpoint that we have. And you know, Spalding played a great game against Essex. Uh, they went up early 2-0. Essex answered back with that early goal to uh, make it 2-1. Um, you know, Spalding had a little penalty trouble. Essex went 4-0 on the power play, or 0-4, excuse me, 0-4 on the power play. They just couldn't get it done on the power play. But, you know, they got the job done. Yeah. They're here for the semifinals. And this is the game you want to see. You want to see the two, you know, not I don't want to say best teams, but two great teams play each other. Yeah. And this is what we're going to have tonight with both these teams. Both teams have great goaltending. Both teams are very good skating team. They work the puck around so well. So we're going we're gonna to have a good one. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with you. I watched that game as well, and I was sitting there, and I know my brother and some of his teammates were watching it over at my dad's house. And obviously, Spalding had a lot of great opportunities. Of course, you can talk about Essex, not capitalizing on a five on three. That's crucial. We've talked about how good this Essex team is on the power play, so something new. Uh, but, you know, as we said, you know, we, we you know, BFA wanted this Essex team, and, and again, I, I understand there's going to be a lot of Chittenden County folks listening in tonight, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, this is a BFA broadcast. Right. This is who BFA wanted. Um, I think Essex is very well coached. Uh, I think Essex has two good lines. 
Essex is not as deep as they usually are. Correct. They don't have a great third line. They can't roll a fourth line. Uh, they're relying on two different lines, but at the same time, they don't make a ton of mistakes. Uh, but BFA playing this for the third time in a row, in my opinion, you know, Essex came in and, and they slapped BFA in the face here as far as the, the complex game goes. But down at the Essex skating facility, outside of Essex power play on a weak penalty, uh, they just had the bounces go their way. That's uh, right. I, 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 I said this to Liam and the rest of the team, got to score more than one goal against Essex. Um, but with that being said, if, if, if I'm lying, this is the last team you want to play for a third time in one year. Yeah, and that's the thing is BFA's had an extra day's rest as well, which yeah. is huge. Uh, that comes into play as well. You got a team that just went into double overtime is falling. They got banged around pretty well by that Spalding Crimson Tide team. So they're going to be a little flat, I think, coming out. And you got BFA that's really a little more fresh yeah. than this Essex uh, Hornets team. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think that's going to play a factor into this game. The one thing that scares me for Duclon and staff is even though Essex might not have the four lines that usually match with the BFA four lines, is – they're very good. You talk about a Prim, a Sisters. Uh, those two guys are very good at developing space, right. um, adding additional time. And then you got you got guys um, like a Cram and a Sincata in the right. slot. And that's what's very dangerous about this Essex team. They realize they're not playing Cushing Academy. They're not playing KUA. Nothing against these kids. They're all good top to bottom. But at the end of the day, this is public division one exactly. high school hockey. And sometimes BFA is a little urgent with their offensive development. And I feel like line and staff has Essex understanding a little bit more with awareness and the room that they have and being able to capitalize on a higher percentage on their chances. Yeah, they take that extra second. They know they have a little more time. Um, you know, at a Division One level, you know, yeah, you, you were just saying, you know, a KUA, a Cushing, you know, prep school level, they don't have as much time. Guys yeah. are on you like that. With this, Division One hockey in Vermont, I mean, you have that extra second. You have a little more time, yeah. you know, get in the zone, slow yeah. it down a little bit, make those tape, tape passes, yeah. snap it around, you know, find your men, find your defenseman, find your guy in the corner, cycle it around. Work the puck around like you can. Yeah. Take that extra time and really find those quality chances, which BFA can do when they work the puck around as well as they have in the past yeah. couple games. Yeah. No, couldn't agree more, Bliss. Great points there. Glad we're on the same page. Let's take a moment to thank our sponsors. Northwestern Orthopedics, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, JC Image, Handy Toyota, and our newest sponsor, Corporate Outfitters. If your business would like to be a sponsor for Northwest Access TV sports coverage this winter, please consider making, or sorry, please consider contacting 802-782-8676. With Corporate Outfitters, they will be our Northwest Access player of the game. Please stay tuned with us for post game. We will give the BFA player uh, who, who stood out the most to us um, a very nice shirt here. I'll show you at some point. But a very nice reward, uh, so stay tuned with that. Um, just moving on, Jason, you know, you and I kind of talked about this team head-to-head -head from a playoff perspective, and I know they played themselves a handful of times. Uh, dating back to the late 60s, they played a total of 20 times. We did a little bit of a breakdown there, but why don't you dive a little bit more in depth for us? Yeah, BFA... Uh and the results they've had, um, excuse me, let me uh, find my spot here. Um, I don't know where I had it. Excuse no, me. that's fine. I'll kind of tee you up. up. Uh, overall, Essex oh, yeah, and yeah, BFA yeah. has played each other a total of 20 times. Outside of a semifinal matchup, Right, 12 and 8 overall for playoff record, 5 and 3 in semifinals. Essex has the lead in both of those. Yeah. Essex ahead 12 to 8 in those uh, overall playoff record and a 5 to 3 in semifinals. Essex is ahead there. So Essex has the edge here in semifinal wins. But hey, this is playoff time. Anything can happen. And, you know, I think BFA is going to be 
ready to play. They're going to be pumped up. They're at home. Yeah. They're going to have a huge crowd here. And, you know, it's going to be – it's just going to be a great game to watch. Yeah, I, I know Duclon last year as a head coach going for his 10th state championship. I believe it's 21 on the season. I don't know what Essex is going for. It's a little premature with a possible Colchester-Rice matchup. Both very good skating teams, folks. Uh, but I know Essex is somewhere around 16, 17, 18. So should be very interesting. Just a reminder, Northwest Access TV is a nonprofit organization. If you're enjoying the sports coverage throughout the year, please consider making a donation. Just visit northwestaccess.tv backslash donation. Again, that's northwestaccess.tv backslash donation. With that, Bliss, we've got plenty of excitement for you here tonight. I'm jacked up. I know you are. This is the matchup everyone wanted to see. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. I think we'll pan over for uh, starting lineups and national anthem. As soon as that concludes, Uncle Bliss and I will be here to provide you BPA Division I semifinal boys hockey action. Stick around with us, folks. It's going to be a good one. Sorry about that little. Thank you. 
Might have been on there the whole time, Jason, as there's a quick thumbs up. Sorry, folks, if you heard any of the extracurriculars. But, talking about the goalies. <laughs> but welcome to the Collins Furley Sports Complex and Fitness Center. Cameron Wood alongside Jason Bliss, Northwest Access TV, folks. BPA Division I boys semifinal action. It's the best rivalry in the state, hands down, as the Essex Hornets, number three, come in to face the BFA Bobwhites. Essex 14-4-2 on the season after that crucial double overtime win, 3-2 against Spalding. BFA, on the other hand, 16-3, with what I think, Jason, was the best win of the year, came in, grabbed CVU, right by, well, the I'm neck, not gonna leave neck, that out. But Grab CVU took control of the game and made a statement. And I think so far CVU, or BFA for that matter, has uh, the best showing early in this postseason. That's right, making that six nothing statement, getting a shutout in that first quarter final game against CVU. Um, yeah, I think teams, if you're looking at the uh, results, I think you should be a little nervous uh, after seeing that Tonight we got three officials, Olsen, Chamberlain, and Nichols. So we got two officials making the calls and one linesman, Chamberlain, the linesman, Nichols, and Olsen, the two main officials. Yeah. Should be a good game. They shouldn't miss much and let the boys play. Yeah. Here we go, first period action. Thank, thank God it's no one we're used to. So yeah. two referees across the board. You know, quickly as Telfer covers it up and take a whistle. Took a little drive through the Jericho Essex region last night just to get a feel for this vibe. And Essex has had BFA's number. I know they're coming in confident. Uh, they made less mistakes than BFA. They're well coached. And and, and I, I, I think they came in thinking that they had BFA's number with those two previous wins early in the season. Right, and that makes no difference at this point in the year. This is playoff time, anything can happen. Put those down the drain. We're starting from scratch here with this semifinals. 
Essex in BFA. So Puck in the BFA defensive zone, looking to break it out is Ethan Audie. Look for him to be very physical on his skates. Very well balanced player as Matt Merrill looks for a wraparound there. For Audie, Audie just behind the net. Puck comes out to the neutral zone. Great crowd here tonight, folks. You talk about St. Albans and Essex, two of the best, two of the best communities as far as hockey is concerned. Great youth associations as Savoy steps up to break it up in the slot, shot on net, rebound there. Puck comes out to Beauregard. Beauregard down low with it, gets it to Wood, touch pass to Beauregard. And then he scores! He scores! And that second line who has had a field day of late. Beauregard working it to Wood. Wood doing what he does, one of the best playmakers on this team, touching it back to Beauregard and a great shot, top left. And this place is buzzing. Yeah, Cam, that's just hard work right there. This second line has just been phenomenal for this BFA hockey team. And Borgard burying that past Booten oh. to get early on the board for this BFA team. Wood working hard down low, Savoy working hard down low. That's just hard work. So we got Borgard getting that goal from Liam Wood. Liam has just been fantastic. The Northwest Access player of the game last game. He is making a statement. And that's what we wanted out of this team as the boys in the slot tries to get a shot on that. In the slot to Tommy Wilbur. Tommy Wilbur with a good opportunity with a block shot by Essex. Bonnie comes out to four check. Puck comes back down low. Essex trying to break it out. Held in by Wilbur, really looking for this third line to match up against Essex third. Yeah, I think Schreindorfer needs to use the body with his size. Tommy Wilbur in front. Fans on his shot, opportunity in the crease, that slides wide, Blondin tries to chip it out, and BFA all over Essex early. Oh yeah, Booten already seen four shots, BFA scoring on that second shot of the game from Beauregard. Beauregard getting his 10th goal on the year for 25 points. Liam Wood, on the other hand, getting his 11th assist of the year for yeah. 16 points, and he has just been great. Yeah. Like I said, Northwest Access player of the game last time, and I think he was an honorable mention the last two games. Yeah, no, super bias, obviously, folks. Sure, I'm gonna get uh, some heat from the Essex community, but ever since Toby moved Wood up to that second line, you've got Beauregard and Savoy who can score. This line has been nothing but great for the Bob Whites. Yeah, the chemistry is just phenomenal. Let's see what happens here. Shot up top, good shot there, just wide as Bradley gets a shot. Puck in front, Telfer there to push it wide. Even with the early goal, Essex is not, they won't roll around. The BFA was up one nothing early down at the facility and Essex came back and won that game 3-1. I mean, look at last game, Spalding went up 2-0 early on in the first period. Essex answered back before the end of the period to make it 2-1. They ended up winning the game. So this team does not yeah. does not sit back on their heels. They will push you till the end. And Jason, quickly, I know we didn't really get into it, but again, BFA and Essex facing themselves twice. Essex with two wins, both 3-1 here at the Plex and at the facility, dating back to the 26th of January and the 16th of February. So Essex certainly coming in with BFA's number. Yeah, that's for sure, Cam. This team just does not give up. Pass up to the point, shot there on net, puck below, and it's a goal by Essex. Hemingway. Wow, as Telfer makes the initial save, puck trickles behind, and Essex answering just like we thought they would, making this 1-1, and a lot of action here in the first, uh, the first three minutes. Yeah, Hemingway, one of those players for this Hornets team, the captain, he is a senior on the defense and he is a dangerous guy. He got the puck, had a clear lane to the net and buried it home, just not buried, but it trickled in. Shot there by Sonata, just over that. Look for Monahan and Hemingway on the back end for Essex. Very good players, 
We said this last time, Essex graduating 10 players, but that junior class last year down seniors, very deep for this team. Yeah, this team is just, they're just nonstop, whether they have. Yeah. And, and I love that right there. Quick shot on net on uh, Hemingway as he's, he's, he's been talked about a lot. Telfer being very disciplined. Hey, don't, don't discredit Telfer. It's just a loose puck that trickled through. But oh, uh, it's a, it a good shot. Yeah, it's a good great shot by action. Hemingway. Uh, Hemingway unassisted on that goal. Uh, BFA, I think, was trying to get out of the zone, cracked out to Hemingway, and he had a nice, nice snapshot. Did on I miss Telfer. the assist on that? Just, there, just unassisted. Yeah, okay. So Essex with it in the zone, starting to gain some possession for themselves. There's a drop pass, third line bringing it out the other way. Schreindorfer with room, one on two. Wilbur with it. Ooh, Wilbur with a little pass there in the slot to Schreindorfer, can't find him. Third line looking good, they're buzzing. And I might have spoken early because this third line of Essex, certainly right there with the third line of BFA. Ethan Audi with it, skating the other way, one on two, he's got speed. Very tough to drag down on his stick, circling around. Circles back, cuts inside the boards, behind the net. First line comes out for support. Oh, cross, cross crease pass there. That ends up coming up top. Colin Audi with a shot blocked by Essex. Yeah, good job there by Colin Audi, falling back on defense for his brother. Ethan trying to work something down low, but couldn't make anything happen. Oh, and here's an opportunity right now for Essex. Sisters rips it wide as Sisters gets a stretch pass. Can't find the net, but a good opportunity there by the Hornets. And that's gonna happen a lot this game. You gotta watch out for Sisters, Sincata. And I knew this was gonna happen. This is not, folks, the same Essex team that took three periods and two overtimes to beat a weak Spalding team. You knew they were gonna rise to the occasion with this rivalry matchup, and that's what we've seen so far. Yeah, both teams getting on the board early. Essex answering right back after that goal. Looks like we got a delayed call here. I think it's on yeah. Essex. Yeah, Be Beauregard gets dragged down. I'm looking for the officiating crew. Good to see Nichols out there, very good ref. Um, nice to see a different cast. Looks like they brought in the horses here tonight. Looks like, Some of the, sorry. No, go ahead. Patrick Monahan going to the yeah, box. Oh, Monahan, yeah, Monahan, good player for the Hornets. Uh, again, the senior class for the Hornets, one of the best in the state, but typically not the depth. They usually can roll four lines against anybody. Uh, third line's played pretty well for them so far, spent their time in the offense, but we'll see how Bob White's doing their first power play. Yeah, I know uh, Essex struggled last game on the power play, going to 0 for 4. Yeah, Latula doing a good job getting it out for the Hornets. Puck comes on his stick again, and he dumps it. Line calls for a line change for his defensive unit. I mean, I can tell you right now, this is going to be an absolute grind for both teams. Yeah, for sure. I think it's going to be a close game. Monahan going to the box for holding. Looks like BFA on the power play. Hopefully they can convert here. Matt Merrill four checking behind the net doing battle with Hemingway. Hemingway already with a goal tonight. No call there as Merrill and Hemingway drag each other down. A lot of line changes early. A lot of chatter from the Essex bench on that no, last uh, Merrill play, but no call. Schreindorfer going the other way, beats Prim on the outside, looks to slide in the slot, gets it to Savoy. Savoy gets it to Johnson. Johnson slides it over, great pass to Audi. Audi to Savoy. Yeah! A goal! A goal! And what a play! And this is the Bob White team that we've been looking for all year. A little bit in the first line in second. And this team's not ready to roll over. As Essex again, two wins on the year, but let me tell you what, this is not the BFA team that showed up in those two games as the Bob White's up two to one with 822 left in the first. Savoy's 15th on the year for 22 points for him and the playmaker Colin Audi feeding him in the slot 
and we have talked about it all year. His release is just phenomenal. Colonnade getting his 21st assist on the year for 31 points, and Savoy getting his 15th goal of the year for 22 points, and BFA capitalizing on that power play, and that's what they need to do in a game like this. I think this is gonna be the other side of the spectrum, but we said it earlier when we talked at noon. Again, nerves are buzzing, but this is gonna be a game just as tight as when the Bob Whites played Rice uh, uh, three years ago and went into overtime. Both of these teams, I personally think if they can find their way, are gonna set themselves up for a state championship. Wood with it now, slides into Beauregard, back to Savoy, Savoy with it, shot a net, wow! Savoy rips one from Wood to Beauregard just over the crossbar, and Booten, the goalie here tonight, 33. We talked about seeing Foster here earlier in the year. Was Ooh. Oh, and a big hit on Ethan Audie in center ice by Cram. And Essex, not known to being so physical, but very disciplined with a big hit by Cram. Beautiful hit by Cram. Savoy that goal by Audie. And Audie getting dragged down yeah. there, but Savoy with a beautiful release from Colin Audie. What a pass from Colin Audi. He's just been a playmaker yeah. all year for this team. Look at his speed there, trying to split the defenders. Yeah, and he, he was going to the zone quick. Unfortunate there, he couldn't get through, but Colin Audi's been phenomenal with passing. His vision for this BFA team has just been fantastic. So BFA up 2-1, literally halfway through the first period. Shot there, comes up top to the near side bar, gets pushed back down low, Essex with it. Levi Webb doing a good job trying to hold it in. Merrill there to support. Merrill gets it back down low. Latula. Pushing it out, puck comes back down low. Peak with it. Gets with Sakata, breaking out through the neutral zone. Brady's does a good job getting it back down low. Look for Frady's big physical player. Very good at not letting stuff behind him. I look for him as an anchor with Ethan Audi here tonight defensively. Yeah, Frady's lets nothing by him. He's just a brick wall. Look at him there yeah. with physicality on Sincata. Puck in the neutral zone, comes back to Frady's, touches it to Rafferty. Rafferty with the puck now, looking to get it down low, does. Picked up by Hemingway. Hemingway with a good job there, breaking it out. Hemingway looks really good for the Hornets yeah, so far. Hemingway, great skater, just sees the ice so well as that defenseman, that senior defenseman for this team and a captain. Little puck pass there to his near side forward, getting out in the neutral zone. It's BFA intercepting, Tommy Wilbur with it, doing one on one with Driver. Puck comes loose, comes over to Lampier. Lampier trips it on the near side boards. Gets up to Wilbur. Wilbur trying to get it down low, can't do so. Hemingway there to intercept, pushing it. Puck comes up to Johnny, Cammy Johnson. Great year by Cam Johnson. Gonna be a force next year. Touch pass there by Beauregard through the neutral zone. And oh. the Bob White's just kind of with another gear tonight. Yeah, good decision there by Johnson. Lampier up top. Yeah! To the back, what are you doing? With Lampy, Lampy throwing a great shot on net. And Liam Wood, a.k.a. Lee B, with the tip in. And the boys are buzzing early. The boys are absolutely buzzing. Wow, beautiful shot from the point. And what hand-eye coordination from Liam Wood to find that puck in the slot, tip it right over boot and shoulder. And Liam Wood has just been phenomenal. His sixth goal of the year and 17 points for Liam. And what a beautiful shot from the point to find Liam in the slot. Yeah, beautiful really, tip. Really love Lanfear taking something off there, just getting on the net. Super happy for Lanfear. It's been a great adjustment to this defense, making a very mature play there in front. And uh, Liam Wood there to tip it in. And Beauregard getting assist, and Lanfear. So Beauregard, 26 points, his second point of the game. And Lanfear getting his third assist on the year. Merrill wrapping around, looks for a puck in the slot, can't find him as Audi tries to slide in there. Going the other way is Latula. 
Latula playing very good for a junior on this line squad. Audi chips it to himself, turns it over. Essex going the other way. Getting it down low is number 26, Monahan. Monahan, one of the other senior defenders, the assistant captain on this Hornet squad. Again, Essex 14, four and two, but again, folks, they had two losses to the Northwood High School team, which is geared towards Northeast hockey in the state of Vermont. So certainly a lot better than their record, in my opinion. Yeah, they're a better team. I mean, they're not going to see teams like Northwood High School team, you know, in playoffs like uh, BFA or Rice. And this crowd's absolutely great tonight. Yeah. What you and I would do to be in this situation. Man, what a tip, though. That was a beautiful tip by Liam over boot and shoulder. Love it. Essex getting in the zone. Hemingway with it now. Tries to make a move. Good broken up play by Beauregard. You know, Cam, you can't set back, though. No, gotta no, keep, Got to no. keep the pressure on no. here. And, and the other thing is BFA is known to be a defensive team. Dump and chase. They get out in leads, and they kind of sit back, make a mistake. Let teams like this, similar to that South Burlington game we saw a couple weeks ago, um, and, and you gotta step on the throttle here and keep it going. Right, you gotta, gotta continue this pressure, you gotta continue the goals, don't sit back on your heels, because the next thing you know, it's a one goal game, two goal game. Hemingway, block shot there by Liam Wood. Hemingway picking up his puck, and I tell you what, for a defenseman, Hemingway kind of reminds me of an Ethan Audi a little bit. Right. Not afraid to get in the offensive zone deep. Very much a two-way player, for and, sure. And uh, it, it, what I've seen, you know, I've watched Hemingway play three times now. So far through this first period, he looks really good. Yeah, he's, he's just one of those two-way players. Sees the ice so well, moves the puck around, finds his man, makes those great tape-to-tape -tape passes. Left in the first, BFA up three, one. Puck up and out of play, a whistle. And, uh, you know, I, I, I mentioned this earlier. We watched the game. I know the BFA boys were watching it. No one wanted a Spalding BFA matchup. No. Uh, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're Duke Lon in your line and in your team, this is the game that you live to play for, and we're seeing it so far. You know, and BFA ends. proved it last year, beating CVU, thinking they won the championship, having to go down to Letty Park and beat Essex to win the championship for real. And this is the same situation. You don't want to play a small thing. You want to play an Essex, a rivalry game. Yeah. Good cycling. Merrill with it behind the net, circling back up top. Again, Merrill with a broken wrist, folks. One of BFA, actually BFA's most explosive player. Yeah, his Not speed, one of, he is. His speed is just incredible. With it now is Prim. Prim very crafty, good shot by Prim. Watch out for Prim and Sisters. Very good at finding space in the offensive zone. Yeah, Prim, Sisters, um, Toby Cram, those guys yeah. work the puck around so well for this first line for Essex. And they are dangerous when they want to be. Uh, Right there was a, a tough angle for Prim. Still a good shot on net. Beautiful shot on net, but no problem there for Telfer. Telfer's been great so far in this game. So third units out for both, both staff. Shot there on net. Audie with it. Circling back around the other way, trying to break it out. He's got room. Chips it into the neutral zone. Puck comes all the way back down. I'm sure the folks will get a kick out of this, but if there's one thing I noticed from the Spalding Essex game and their commentator is they don't talk as much as we do. So <laughs> I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to let the folks enjoy the game a little bit more. Yeah, well we do what we do, you know, yeah, here. I know, I know. It's hey, it's a rivalry game. It's a Franklin County broadcast, folks. Sincata with it behind the net. Sincata, very dangerous score for Essex. Pass in front. Ooh, good opportunity there for Dubray out of the corner. BFA there to break up the play. Audi with it, skating the other way. 
mean, Ethan Audie is very strong on his stick. He shows it again right there, Jay. You know, Sin Cotta is a super strong player. It's just a tough guy to take down, tough guy to get your stick on. But yeah, Audie, good play there. Good to break it out of the zone. Puck in the neutral zone. Gets it down low. Duquan calling a line change. Maybe an icing. Yeah. I'm not going to say a two-line pass. I picked up on that there. Looks like Chamberlain's taking it to the center dot. Maybe a... And, you know, uh, listen, I know Booten switched off with Foster. Booten hasn't looked bad. BFA's just had three solid goals. I don't think anyone could stop. Intercepted pass there for Audi. Ooh, shot there blocked by Monaghan. And there's the period as BFA and Essex pushing and shoving to end the period. Everything we wanted to see out of this rivalry early. Action both ways. Certainly a lot to talk about, Jason, here out of the gate. Yeah, that's for sure. What a period by both of these teams. Uh, both teams pretty much staying composed. Monaghan had the holding penalty which BFA converted on that power play yeah. from Beauregard, uh, getting that first goal from Wood. Yeah. Um, Bo and, and Beauregard, if there was a second assist, Beauregard would have got it. Right. He exactly. left it for Wood, went to the slot, and uh, Beauregard there to cash in. Right, Beauregard getting that first goal. Essex answering back with that goal from Hemingway, that shot from the point that just trickled through Telfer. Then Savoy getting on the board with that beautiful pass from yeah. Colin Audi, who's yeah. been just a beautiful playmaker all year. Yeah. Savoy fired at that top left corner. Then you had a great shot from Lanfear, who had a nice feed from Beauregard, and Wood getting that beautiful tip over Booten's shoulder. And uh, BFA up 3-1 early on in this game. And I think, like we said earlier in the game, they got to you know, keep the pedal down, yeah. keep this pressure on. I mean, put up as many goals as you can. Don't let up. And yeah, I don't think Essex is playing bad, but this is BFA on another gear. I, yeah. I don't, I don't know what was said. I'm not sure if the boys got together just on a team meeting without the coaching staff. Uh, but you know, like, hey, Essex has beat them twice, three to one. They had their number. Yeah. I know Essex came in here confident, as they should, based on the previous results. But BFA certainly answering. Uh, you know, good for the game recap there. Quickly, let's take a moment to thank our sponsors, Northwestern Orthopedics, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, JC Image, Handy Toyota, and Corporate Outfitters. Again, Corporate Outfitters sponsoring our Northwest Access Player of the Game. Stay tuned for that. Um, and just on another mo note, Jay, I, I know we're coming to the end of the year, but between spring sports and next year, just a reminder, Northwest Access TV, nonprofit organization, if you're enjoying the sports coverage throughout the year, please consider making a donation. Just visit northwestaccess.tv backslash donation. Uh, so just a great period there. Um, I, I know you kind of went through the results. On a side note, folks, just for a, a, a first period intermission or a first intermission, uh, the BFA comments, number one, hosting the number four Rutland with a very good 5 nothing win. Uh, previously beating the number eight, Kingdom Blades. We actually have Coach Coffee up here. Congrats to Coach Coffee. He'll face the Spalding Crimson Tide. I believe it's Monday down at Gutterson. And, uh, you know, you certainly love how that girls team's gelling. Uh, again, BPA record with goals four. Uh, no names on the end of their jerseys. It's just believe. And uh, that coaching staff has that team absolutely moving right now. Yeah, that team undefeated all year. They've just been fantastic. And uh, I see them going to Gutterson and taking care of business on, what was it, Tuesday? Yeah. Tuesday um, versus Rutland. I think it might be Monday, but there's been a Monday. shuffle across the board. So. Okay. But either way, I think they're going to take care of business, win that state championship. Yep. And so far in this game, BFA's played fantastic. I think they've worked the puck around well. They've been super physical, um, but you cannot sit back on this team because the next thing you know, you're within a one goal game or it's tied. So um, Chris Line's probably in there right now, yeah. um, you know, getting these boys ready for the second period. And there's a ton of time left. You got two periods. So No, very good coaching staff. BFA's going to have to stay on their toes. 
Another action, BFA Boys Basketball with the 55-47 win earlier in the week, I believe Wednesday, against Burlington. Um, they're facing number three, Rice. Uh, Rice has had their number in the year down at Rice here tonight. BFA losing those matchups early in the year, 66-44, 65-51. Um, but, you know, uh, with Noah Earl and staff and uh, Menard and all his players, uh, what he's been able to do early with this BFA program. I know they had 60 plus guys go out for the team. Um, they're in big action here tonight, uh, down at Rice as mentioned, so we wish them luck. Um, might have taken away a little bit from the crowd here, but at the end of the day, Not looks, much. Like both <laughs> the, looks like both communities came out strong. Yeah, and this is, both these communities are huge. They're huge hockey fans. Essex and BFA, and no one wants to see a game more than a BFA Essex yeah. uh, semifinal, final, quarterfinal, whatever it is, whether yeah. it, regular season, uh, playoffs, doesn't matter. The crowd here is phenomenal tonight, so yeah. look, look for a good one in the rest of this game. Yeah, we're, we're going to take a break and um, get ready for second period action. Um, second intermission before the third. We'll talk a little bit about this Division One bracket. Yep. We'll save that material for then. Again, Cam Wood, Jason Bliss, Northwest Access TV. We'll be back, folks, for the beginning of the second period. BFA up 3-1 to one against their rival, the Essex Hornets. Stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss it.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Cameron Wood alongside Jason Bliss live here at the Collins Pro Sports Complex. Game two of the Division I BPA semifinals. As mentioned, the Comets winning 5 0 earlier against the Rutland Raiders. And Jason with a big point right there. Looks like there might be a goalie change as booting out Foster in. As mentioned, we called Foster earlier in the year. Line's not messing around, looking for something to spark this team. So let's keep an eye out for that, folks. Do goaltender for the Hornets as they trail 3-1 headed into the second. Yeah, Foster, senior goaltender for the Sussex Hornets team. I'm not sure the decision on that, getting a cold goaltender in. Uh, but hey, I think Line knows what he's doing more than I do. So Essex with it in their offensive zone. What a great crowd here tonight, folks. Good game so far. Bob White's, as mentioned, up 3-1. Uh, but Essex hanging on top. They answered off that first goal. But VFA, again, I watched his staff growing up. Uh, they're certainly nothing against Essex. My opinion, they're certainly deeper, but we'll see if Essex discipline and their coaching and their leadership, we talked about the seniors, can kind of carry them back into this game. Yeah, that's for sure. At this point, you got to stay composed. I'm sure they're a little frustrated being down by two goals in the second period. So shot there on net by VFA. Puck comes out to Wood, leaves it there for Savoy, tries to get a Beauregard, can't do so. Essex going the other way. Might be a two-on-two -two opportunity there. Good shot by Forcier. Forcier, one of those kids we talked about a lot last year. Haven't heard much from him, but uh, good opportunity there through the neutral zone. Shot on net, Beauregard there. Puck comes off, it's Mooring. And Helmet comes off, Foster. Foster, a senior goaltender, boom to junior. So we'll see if that kind of comes into play. Foster uh -oh. can kind of settle in. Uh-oh, hold on here. Yeah, it's like we be got goaltender interference. It's like we got Savo or uh, Borgar going to the ball. Yeah, and, and, and the first thing to come to our mind is this is the last power play you want to see. Exactly. Is, is this Essex Hornet team? Uh, they had a power play goal down at the facility against the Bob Whites earlier this year. Very well run. Was a difference maker in that game. So let's nestle in for this as Forcier takes the face off. Yeah, you're going to see uh, Cram and Prim up at the points. Those are the guys they are looking for shots from the point or a one-timer. So watch 17 and 8 and Hemingway as well. So well, Essex dangerous guy. with it. Sorry, Essex with it in the neutral zone. Clark there trying to shrug off his man. Essex beating him, getting it down low as Hemingway. Talk about Hemingway. He's a senior, but he's gotten down low early when available. Great pass in front there for Essex. Prim with it now. Up top to Hemingway, slides it over, shot, and he scores! And Essex answering is Cram. Cram, a difference maker for this Hornet team. And line, getting the boys with an early goal, making it 3-2, a minute 30 into this second. You know, Prim feeding it over to Hemingway. Hemingway to cram for a beautiful one-timer to beat Telfer low. And we got a one-goal game now early on in this second period. Uh, we said it, don't let Essex get on the power play. And they make BFA pay as they're one for one on the power play. BFA also one for one on the power play. Yeah, cram, beautiful pass from Hemingway. Great pass in front, shot there. Wow, what a great opportunity. A two on one there. Slid in front to Dubray, unable to capitalize. And Essex with another gear early. Yeah, you see the intensity yeah. picking up. A little momentum for Essex after that goal. Audie with it, trying to break it out to Merrill. Gets it out. Webb there trying to collect, can't do so. Puck comes all the way down. Johnson there to give chase. We got a Pre whole new game on our hands. Yeah, pressure by Dupre. Dupre just missed a bunny in front of the net. BFA able to hold it in. Audi with it. Doing work against King. Puck up 
top to Lamphere. Lamphere already with assist tonight. Great shot there on that with the wood tip. Wood there down low with it, doing battle. Circling by the net, looking for someone. Circles back to his backhand behind the net. Dubre there to pick it up, breaking it out Look on the that. other side. <laughs> Puck rides along the boards, comes up to Johnson. Johnson gets it to Beauregard. Beauregard with space, beats his man, slides it to Savoy. Savoy touches to Wood, Wood fans! And the second line again with opportunities early. Ooh, and Liam Wood just tips it just wide of Foster on the near side. As Essex getting it out down low, chipping it down, is Sisters. Look out for Sisters. He's very sneaky, folks. Good skater. Very explosive as far as an offensive threat goes. A beautiful play by that second line to try to get a chance there. 11.30 left in the second. Bob White's up 3-2. A lot of goals early. Puck in front, Prim with it, looks for his man, tries to find Sakata, can't do so. Puck up top of the point, deflected there. Puck in front, that goes wide. Audi with it now behind the net. Good opportunity by Essex. Oh, Ooh, great block shot there by Beauregard. Puck out as Prim tries to get a quick shot in the slot. Audi with it behind the net, he's got room. He's got space, he's skating, he's tooling. Sincata trying to break it up, makes the hit on Audi. Puck coming all the way down. Monahan with it, touches it to Prim. Prim gets it down low. Giving chase is Kelly. BFA picking up the possession, going the other way is Frady's. Frady's with room. Shot there, ooh, good shot by Frady's as he makes way into his offensive zone. Oh, and Frady's with a smart play there to Frady. eliminate the odd man rush, get it down low as Rafferty helps out. And this is where BFA's got to be careful. This third line getting sucked back. Shot there, good save by Telfer. Blondin with it, up top to the point. Shot there on that, another great save by Telfer. Frady's with it. Great pass by Frady's. Stretching through the neutral zone, Rafferty with it. Gets it down low. Duclon will call for a line change. Raff intercepting on the far side boards. Only two penalties so far, folks. Frady's had to be shot after that yeah. last shift. Great shift by Frady's. Great shift, he moved into the zone, made a great move at the blue line once he moved into the zone. Got a shot on Max Foster. But good decision there by Frady's to find that space and get a good quality shot on that and test this Max Foster, who's a little bit uh, rusty coming in in this second period. Essex looking very good this period. This was the Essex team I was afraid that was gonna show up against PFA here in the second period. Good job by the coaching staff getting them in check. Looks like an Essex player lost his glove, number six. Brendan Dubray playing with one glove. Audie giving chase in the offensive zone. He's got Merrill in front, circling. Leaves it for Merrill. Merrill with it. Pass in front, intercepted there by Driver. Audie coming into support. Levi Webb gonna sneak in, keep it in. Unable to do so. Driver going the other way, good stretch pass there. And a chip down low by Dubray. Dubray talked about him a lot, certainly getting in on the action. Dubray still with one glove. <laughs> There's a puck thrown down low. Delayed off sides, waved off. 8.30 left in the second. Bob White's up 3-2. Breakout pass there to Webb. Webb's odd man rush. Intercepted by Cram, thrown down, and going to be an icing. Probably a huge icing for BFA, as Essex has had their number this period as we're almost halfway through. Looks like uh, Savoy Borgard and Wood coming out. Wood's been a great on face-offs, but he's facing off against Cram. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. 
Prim winning it back. Yeah, Prim winning it to Monahan. However, Savoy there to pick it up. Up top to Lanfear. Lanfear doing a good job just throwing it back down, not knowing or knowing that he had sisters kind of pinching up top. Essex with it. Coming through the neutral zone. Johnson there to pick up the puck. Kempe not really playing too physical so far. Johnson with it. Pass over to Lanfear, touches it to Beauregard. Beauregard with room and space. There's a slap by Sisters on Beauregard, just enough to break it out. Essex getting it the other way. Johnny with it now, circling back with his forehand. Puck out of the zone. Peak with it, getting it down low. Comes back to Johnson. Johnson trying to chip it up to the neutral. Does, and that's gonna be a icing just halfway through this second. Yeah, I feel like uh, Essex has really come on strong in this second period, getting that goal has really boosted uh, their confidence. And they've been playing very well. BFA kind of taken back a little bit by all this pressure from Essex. This might be a mismatch as the second unit's out here with the third line. You got Sin Cotta and Force here very capable of scoring against the BFA third line. Another quick whistle there, I believe up and out of play. Yeah, hit the netting up okay. top. Okay. Puck won by force here. However, BFA there. Try to gain possession in front and there's a rebound and a good save as Kelly got a second hand opportunity. I'm not sure, I think it was Forcier who threw it in front of the net, showed up on Kelly's stick, but a quick poke check and then a follow up save by Telfer. Yeah, those can get real dangerous floating towards the net as slow as that was, but Telfer managed to cover it up and you get the first line back on, so get things back to normal here. winning the draw, Merrow there to pick up the win. Brady's coming in to help as pressure by Essex. Colin Audie with it, hit there on Essex. Getting it out of the zone, puck in the neutral zone. Oh, Merrill, Merrill's down here. Merrill's down. Just managed to climb over the boards. Watch out for that wrist of his. He also got hit down at the facility, managed to play the rest of the game. Hopefully it's nothing too severe. He's going to the locker room, oh. looks like. So look out for that. That could be a huge miss for BFA as Merrill hits the locker room. He's just outside of the doorway, sitting down, looking with the trainer. Uh, I'm not sure what happened. There was right along the BFA bench here took a slight hit as he went down and didn't get up very fast. So hopefully Maddie can come back. I feel like we're gonna need Maddie. Yeah, we're gonna need him. Maddie's played great even with a broken wrist. His puck movement's got better as the year goes on. Like I said, he's probably the most explosive player on this team. Wood winning it back to Audie, deflected there up and over the net. If that ends up being the case, they're probably gonna ride on this second line pretty heavily. Oh, and I don't know as Close Piper, one. I don't know as it looked like Piper managed to keep that inside the second half of the blue line, but calling the whistle regardless. And that'll be a whistled offsides. Yeah, it was the coolest one there on the line. Chamberlain must have seen it. Wood winning the draw. Savoy there to throw it down low. Wood with it, leaving it for Savoy. Circling, looking for a man. Trying to hold on to it. Ah, Savoy doing a good job there, holding the puck in like he did on that Wood game last, that Wood goal last game. Shot on net, ooh, good opportunity. Wood in the corner with Monahan. Puck in the corner, 
Savoy comes out. Looks for a shot. Ooh, and Savoy with a good opportunity there. Just enough of a deflection by the Essex defenders to send that wide to Foster. Yeah, that was a good shift by the second line. Piper with it, stretches it to Ethan Audi. Looks for Lanfear, Lanfear for checking, gonna be a icing with just under five minutes left in the second. A lot different of a second period when comparing to the first. We got Merrill back on the bench, Good. Cam. Got Good. Merrill back on the bench. Need him. Hopefully he's all right. Yeah, no, he, he looks good. Getting a sip of water, getting his bearings back, so let's see. Looks like Wilbur able to win that draw. However, Essex for checking, gaining the possession behind the net. Looks like we got Prim with it on his forehand, Ooh. cutting back to his backhand, looking for a man. What Phelps a there to defend. Prim circling, trying to find someone, can't do so. VFA defense clogging up those passing lanes, much needed. Prim with a shot on that, ooh. And there's gonna be arguably a tripping or a hooking, and wow, that's that's not what you're looking to do. As it looks like Johnson will go down. I don't think it was intentional by Johnson, but feet stopped moving, and uh, Essex went down in an easy call by the referees in front of the net there. And uh, yeah, it's, you know, wow. Prim down low, just, such a crafty player, hard to take the puck away from. Crimson, Cotta, Graham, Hemingway, and Force here on the power play. BFA doing a good job getting that out of the zone. Force here with it, leaves it for Prim, good pass there. Touch pass over to Cram, Cram cutting, back to Hemingway, Hemingway slides it over. Good touch pass there to Force here in the slot. BFA breaking it up, Ethan Audi with it, getting it all the way out, good job by the Bob Whites. Yeah, get a quick change, get your next line. Uh, looks like Wood and Webb. Essex with it, getting in the zone. Piper there to defend, puck comes up top of the slot to Hemingway. Back over to Prim, looks to cross it across the crease. And I believe that's thrown up into the bench by Audi. You know, you just gotta try as best as you can to get in these passing lanes of Essex because they're trying those backdoor one-timers from either side, looking for a Cram, looking for a Hemingway, and looking for a Prim. Left in the second. What a great game, folks. Both teams should be very proud on what they've done on the year. Piper battling sisters in the corner. 14 on 14. Puck comes up top. To Monahan. Monahan back down to Blondin. Blondin circling to his backhand, getting it down low. BFA drag down, no call there. Puck in the corner, Blondin with it, still has it on his oh. stick. And another and another penalty on BFA. And, you know, we talked about it earlier, regardless of the depth of BFA, making these type of mistakes are going to be crucial in the outcome against a disciplined Essex team. Yeah, I'm surprised the ref out at the red line managed to see that call before Nichols did. Olsen, one of the rest of the orange stripes, managed to make that call from outside of the zone. I don't think Nichols saw it in the zone, but BFA, Audi going to the box for two. Yeah. So. Will be the third power play for Essex. Already one for one. 30 seconds left on the second, but more importantly, a five on three here for 30 seconds. So they'll be on the uh, special teams here for the majority of the second as there's only 2.42 left in the second. 
Got to think this is Essex's chance to tie it up. Hey, Spalding killed off a yeah. five on three, so I think BFA can do the same. A little surprised by Forcier's shot there. All the room in the world decides to just throw it on the net of Telfer. Not really sure the thinking there, but they'll have another whistle here in the offensive zone. It's like Frady's had to go in and take that face off. Yeah, and I think he borderline won it and then lost the possession after that. Up top to Prim, circling. Look for Prim, very good visual player. Last guy I want with the puck on my stick by BFA. Shot there and he scores! And Cram, I believe his second goal of the night. On the power play, yeah. that's Cram's second goal on the power play. Beautiful assist by Prim. And Cram, one of those guys that can really fire the puck. And BFA pays for that penalty. And Essex tying this game 3-3. Three, three. And that wasn't a five on three there as time expired, but it was just enough time to get a BFA player back in the zone to face the five on four. And Essex doing what they do. And this is what we were afraid of, folks. So 3-3. Three, three. And at least it looks like, as mentioned, there was two seconds there where BFA got away of not having the first guy come out of the box. And the second penalty on that five on three allows it to be even strength. Savoy in the offensive zone. That's arguably wow. a hit from behind. Wow. I'm not sure how they call that last penalty, but let that one go. Puck in the slot. Yeah, I'm shocked by yeah, that one. No, the officiating's been inconsistent all year. It's a little high, I think. You can knock me for calling a two-line pass here and there, but officiating has been so inconsistent. We see it right there again. Uh, tough one there for BFA. It would have been nice to go on the power play right before the end of the second period. But unfortunate there. Second line trying to get it down low. Unable to. Essex going the other way. Three on two. Shot on net. Good save by Telfer. Really proud of Telfer to hang in there after letting in a couple goals. Still settled. Looks good. You know, Telfer, it's so hard to stop a good shooter like Cram who can really rip it from a side angle like he has at the top of the circles in that in their offensive zone. Graham, one of those guys that we talked about before this game. They're dangerous on the power play with Prim and Cram. Wilbur touching it up to Rafferty. Rafferty going the other way. Just under a minute left in the second. Good interception there by Rafferty to try to hold it in. That's up and out of play. That'll give BFA an offensive face off. If I'm Duplon, I'm throwing this first line out there, and he is. Matt Merrill back on the ice. I'm not sure if this is the first shift since the potential injury on Merrill, but again, good to see him out there. And, and I don't know with these two teams, but I gotta think the next goal might be the difference maker at no matter what point in the game. Right, yeah, and it, you know, Essex is hard to play against a five on five team, so BFA's gotta stay composed, stay out of the box. Colin Audi with it, shot on there. Ooh, good shot by, sorry, Ethan Audi. Good shot by Ethan. Puck behind the net, Merrill there. On the boards, just about 20 seconds left. BFA with it behind the net is Merrill. Webb looking to sink in. Puck turned over by Merrill. It's like and Weber lost his helmet. Yeah, Webb drawn down, lost his helmet. Automatic whistle, 12.7 left in the second. Foster coming out to give him his helmet and uh, no call there. I think yeah. Webb got a little mixed up in front of the net, but. BFA winning the draw. About five seconds left, and that's gonna do it. As a period in favor of the Hornets coming out 
strong. Not sure what was said to the players, but owning BFA there and the Bob Whites on their heels as we have a 3-3 dogfight fist thrown coming into the last period of action. So Jay, no Bob White goals there, but Essex cashing in two of their own. And I believe as well, BFA with a total of three penalties there. Yeah. Four on the night. Can't take four penalties against Essex. No, BFA's had three penalties. Um, yeah, it was a tough second period for BFA. Um, Beauregard getting that interference call, Johnson getting the hooking call, and Audie getting a hooking call as well. And like I said, late in that third period, BF, or, uh, Essex, a tough team to play against five on five. You start taking penalties, they're going to make you pay. Cram did that twice in the second. Cram getting that first goal on the power play from Hemingway. Beautiful one-timer. And Cram again getting his second goal of the game. Uh, from that beautiful assist by Prim. And Cram, one of those guys that can really shoot the puck from the top of the circles, almost like an Ovechkin up there, on, uh, you know, in Ovechkin's yeah. office. That's where he makes the most out of it and makes BFA pay. This is a tie game going into the third period and just not the spot BFA wants to be in, being up three to one. Yeah. So, again, I mean, it's my fourth game calling, not calling Essex. I watched them play the Bob Whites twice in those 3-1 wins. Watched them play Spalding the other night on YouTube. Um, you know, I, 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 listen, Essex has played a lot more hockey than that this year. But from what I've seen, that's arguably one of the best periods right there we saw out of the Hornets. Yeah, it was just unfortunate for BFA getting those calls. And, um, you know, I almost thought Savoy could have had a call there and yeah. had BFA go on to the power play. But... You know, stuff happens, and, you, you know, people are going to miss stuff. But uh, so far, I mean, I think it's been a pretty pretty solid game officiating-wise. And, and uh, you know, BFA's just got to stay composed. they got to stay out of the box uh, in the third period, and they got to really come out strong because it's it's a 0-0 game at this point. Let's take a moment to thank our sponsors, Northwestern Orthopedics, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, JC Image, Andy Toyota, and Northwest Access Player of the Game sponsored Corporate Outfitters. If your business would like to be a sponsor for Northwest Access TV sports coverage this winter, please contact 802-782-8676. Let's show them a little bit of the swag Here we go. that's on hand. Win or lose, we will give that to BFA's most valuable player. Um, yeah, and we've given out a ton this year. Yeah, I mean, we're and again, yeah, we understand kids have had multiple player of the games, but we're trying not to give the same shirt to multiple kids. They're not going to wear the same shirt three times in one week. Yeah, you've had Telfer, Webb, Audie, Borgard, yeah. Colin Audie, yeah. Clark Merrill, Liam Wood, Corbin Schreindorfer. The list goes and, on. Uh, I think Lanfear's played a good game. Someone yeah. who hasn't been recognized. Right. Uh, without that shot on net, Wood doesn't get that goal to get him at three, which would leaving them in a 3-2 deficit with a period left. Um, another reminder, Northwest Access TV is a nonprofit organization. If you're enjoying the sports coverage throughout the year, please consider making a donation. Just visit northwestaccess.tv backslash donation. Again, just another note, BFA Comets advancing to the state championship. I believe it's Monday at Gutterson Fieldhouse. That would be an 8.30 game. They will face a Spalding Crimson Tide team uh, who overcame a deficit to Essex down in Barrie earlier this morning. So congrats to uh, the Comets, uh, Rulo, Coffee, and the whole team. Uh, Comets having a tremendous year. So uh, hats off to them. Um, looking at the rest of the league, talking about the playoffs, as you know, BFA beating number seven, CVU 6-0. Uh, Essex taking the tie to two overtimes, beating them 3-2. We also had a couple other games we got results on as well, Jason. Yeah, Rice and Rutland. Uh, Rice, that number one team, they've been great all year. Taking care of Rutland 8-3. to three. And Rice plays Colchester next game uh, tomorrow at 5 o'clock at Carnes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think um, 
you know, Essex took care of Spalding. Spalding really came on strong. Yeah. Had um, some great opportunities had, late. Yeah, McNamara had a great opportunity in that first overtime. Got a loan uh, on uh, Booten and just couldn't manage to score, but they had a couple breakaways. They had yeah. a ton of shots. They were very physical. They really did a good job playing against this Essex Hornets team and really, really surprised Killed me. Killed a five on three in Killed the second, five on I believe. Three. Yep, and yeah. uh, they were, they just played so well. So hats off to the Spalding Crimson Tide boys team. Um, and I think they really banged up this Essex team, but really tonight, Essex nah, looks they haven't pretty left yet. good. So. Yeah, I'm not sure if this third period is going to wear down Essex, but that step they had compared to the first, they came out sluggish. BFA played a really good first period, folks. Yeah. But Essex absolutely owned them. One of their best periods is second period. Not the same Essex team I watched against Spalding earlier in the week. Uh, so look for that. 3-3 uh, three, three game. I, I, again, I no matter what point, yeah, it's easy to say next goal wins, but even if it's early in the third, I think this this next goal kind of dictates the outcome. Yeah. Um, talking about the number one Rice and number four Colchester matchup tomorrow. Colchester with a really good win against the number five South Burlington team, five to two. They were up four nothing early, kind of settled down a little bit. South Burlington able to beat them two one the remainder of the way, but still not good enough as the Colchester Lakers advancing to that semifinal. They've had a great year all year, only losing to the BFA, Essex, and Rice of the world. So we'll look for that matchup tomorrow. Um, but no, Jay, I mean, I think at this point, we're going to take a quick break. Um, we'll be back for third period action as your BFA Bob Whites, number two in the state, hosting the number three Essex Hornets with a opportunity to go to the Division One state championship next Friday, March 11th at 8.30 following the Division II game. So stay tuned for that, quick break, and we'll be back for third period action.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is what you've been waiting for live here at the Collins Pro Sports Complex and Fitness Center. Cameron Wood alongside Jason Bliss. 3-3 three, three in an absolute dogfight. Haymakers being thrown as the BFA Bob White's number two in the VPA, VPA hosting the number three Essex Hornets. Jason, we just talked about it. BFA certainly coming out first. Essex owning that second, but hey, Essex is three for four on the power play, bud. Yeah, they've just, Hemingway getting that first one, Cram, Cram getting both goals in the second period, all on the power play. BFA got to stay composed, stay out of the box. Let's go here, let's have a good third period. Buckle in, folks, it's going to be electric. Puck in the Essex zone, breaking it out. Three on two if they hurry. Prim giving chase. One on one against Audi behind the net. Puck thrown up top, Levi Webb getting it out through the zone. Audi there to intercept in the neutral zone. Boys four checking. Merrill giving chase. Merrill looking good after he got banged up near side boards. Good to see Essex going the other way. Prim with it, good move by Prim. Even better defensive play right there. Let's give Camden Piper kudos one-on-one -on -one against the crafty Prim and giving Telfer a chance to cover that up and get a whistle. Yeah. Forcey are set to take the draw against Wood. Prim, one of those guys coming at you fast, so kudos there to BFA defense. Puck in the Essex zone. It's up on the glass. <laughs> Brady's with it. Space. Chips it to Beauregard. Intercepted there by Sincata. Sincata throwing it back down. Clark to collect. Clark trying to break it up. Picked up by Sincata. Sincata doing a good job forechecking as he loses stick there, one-on-one -on -one against Frady's. Beauregard trying to pinch it out. The traffic gets it over to Clark. Clark looking for Savoy. Stretches it to Beauregard, can't find him. Puck back in the neutral zone, picked up by Wilbur. Wilbur shot there, Oh, good job by Wilbur, just wide of the net. It's what you want to see out of the third line early. Johnson with the puck, leaving it for Savoy. Savoy chips it to Schreindorfer. Schreindorfer with room one on one against Ooh. Hemingway. Ooh. Big hit by Hemingway as Schreindorfer loses his stick. And that's another thing. This Essex team has not been afraid to lay the body. And BFA has paid the, the price for it. Yeah, trying to offer a big body, but Hemingway took care of him there. Up top to Lampier, shot there, trickle puck in front. Ooh, and a good opportunity by Schreindorfer as this call by line to get Foster, sorry, uh, yeah, to get Foster in net has paid off, but good job by the third unit setting the tone here about 221 into the third. Yeah, Schreindorf are doing a good job trying to track down that rebound, but Foster coming up quick. Ooh, thrown in front there by Webb. For as many people, I can't believe how quiet it is. Everyone on edge. Yeah, I'm on edge. <laughs> Sisters going the other way. Skating, shot there, good save by Telfer. Ooh, pass in front there for Cram. Cram already with two Gs on the night. Cram doing work against Audi. His brother Colin there to pick it up, chips it out, comes out. I don't know how that's yeah, not it's offside out. It's when out. the Piper. No, it's out. Oh, okay. It's out. Slides it, neutral zone. Webb, touch pass there, just misses Merrill. Colin Audi with it, getting it down low. Line change here, second unit coming out. Couple new defenders, Brady's and Clark to support on the back end. Beauregard shrugs off his man. Liam Wood with it. Space, Liam looking to set something up. Oh. Little break out there, just misses his man Savoy. Didn't see it coming. Savoy still able to find the puck in the neutral zone, chipping it down low. Trying to set it up, the second line very dangerous. Savoy with it, leads it up top. 
Gets it to Clark. Clark back down low. Beauregard with it. Trim. Wood coming in to four check. Puck comes up top to Sincata. See, I'm laying the body right there if I'm Savoy on Sincata. Essex knows they have all day. That's scary in a 3-3 game. Good decision there by Clark to just get it down low. Essex going the other way. Force here with a great move. BFA turning it over, going the other way. Lamphere doing a good job getting it out. Nice. And that's going to be a nice. Oh, man, Cam, I am just oh, like butterflies no, and not just not. knots in my stomach, like yeah, you said. And no, I, know. I can't. I can't deal oh, with this. Hey, right listen, hey, I know I'm obnoxious on here. I know the Essex and Chittenden County community is probably sick and li sick of listening to us, but I really give Essex credit after really one day's rest and double overtime, putting themselves in a position to win this game. Well, I think it's better than listening to dead air, but That's well, true. that was borderline uh, hooking, but good body. Body with it, with the puck, looking for someone in front. Slides it to Webb. Oh, oh, and that's and that that was completely incidental, but it's gonna be called nine times out of ten. Oh man, and both referees with the arm up, they are not gonna miss that one by Webb. And that's BFA's fifth penalty tonight. Webb's second, you fourth can't. penalty of the night. Well, they had one in the first and three in the no, second. No, Monahan had the no. Monahan just had the one. And then they had the three. Okay, well then I missed that. Because Monaghan had the goal okay. on Hemingway. Well that's why you're here, Bob. So fourth, but regardless, four penalties. And Essex looking to set it up. As mentioned, two for three already on the night. Pass in front. There's a shot, I believe, off the bar and a goal. And Essex up as Forcier able to capitalize playing a great game so far. And just like that, Bob White facing an Essex team with three unanswered goals in Essex three for four on the power play. And I hate to say it, but Bob White's just handing this off to the Hornets. Yeah, you gotta stay out of the box. You've got to stay composed, Forcier there with a the goal. Hemingway getting his th third point of the game. He's got two goals in it. And two. finally, the referees calling one in favor of the Bob Whites, as they should. Hemingway getting his third point of the game, two assists and a goal for him. But Essex just lethal on the power play compared to that Spalding game. And number eight, Toby Cram going to the box. If Essex beats BFA three times in a row with how deep BFA, I'm giving it to the Essex coaching staff. Oh, and, yeah. Because and, 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 I just, this team is too good to lose three games in a row to this Essex team. Shot there in front, rebound. Got another call here. Yep, five on three. The high stick. Yep. Bryce, it's almost like I thought we had Bergeron on staff again there for a little while. Looks like number. Looks like number ten. I think is going to the box for. Or no, excuse me, number six, Dubre. Well, at this twenty-six. Point, well, at this point, we can't even talk about penalties because this is going to be BFA's third special teams opportunity. So Monahan going to the box with a high stick and Cram getting that interference call and now giving BFA an opportunity to tie this game. Let's go. Colin Audi with it. Christ, Chamberlain needs to get out of the way. Just settle it down, boys. Fan shot there. Oh, and Savoy had the opportunity of an ages. Fans on the shot. Essex doing a good job getting it out. You know, Savoy been not known for fanning on a shot. He's usually got a phenomenal release. Skating with it, circling. 
Puck up top, Ethan Audi with it. Looking for room, slides it over to Johnson. Shot there by Johnson, rebound, oh! Wow. It just slides past Foster. Audi up top to Audi with it. Shot there, oh, and that's tipped. Good job by Prim to get a stick on it. Johnson slides it over to Audi, back up top to Audi with it. Jerking, gets it to Colin. Colin with it in the slot, shot there. Oh, and actually look for the backdoor pass to Savoy. Back to Colin, Colin up top to Ethan. Back to Colin, Colin with space. Shot, Ooh. good save. Foster. Foster, 25-45. Left on the Graham and Monahan penalties. BFA with all the time in the world and shooting it into the stomach. You know, I don't think Foster really knew where that puck was. He was kind of looking around as he trapped it up. But great faceoff win there by Liam. Liam Wood winning the draw there. Great draw. Up top to Frady's. Frady slides it over to Schreindorfer. Schreindorfer. Oh, good pass there in the slot. Shot there by Webb. Oh, my. Wow. Great look by Schreindorfer to Webb. Webb just missing the crossbar. And we haven't seen Liam Wood on this second power play unit all year. I think Duplon understands he's one of your base, best face-off guys putting him out there. Yeah, you're going to have Audi, Savoy, and Beauregard with Johnson and Ethan Audi up at the point. So let's we'll see if they can capitalize here. Colin set to take the draw. I believe Ford's here on the other side. Beauregard with it to Savoy. Savoy, good pass there to Johnson in the slot shot. In front, Johnson comes up top, shot there, rebound in front. Oh, in Essex, escaping. As they throw it on net, and they kill the cram Man. penalty. And just left is Monahan as Johnson with space and time. And I wonder if you're going to look back on that five on three and ask if that's the difference maker. Certainly think if Essex can win this draw, that will be the remainder of BFA's power play. But good opportunities there, getting a couple. Oh, puck in front, shot there, and he scores! And Graham with a hat trick! And with 7.47, BFA rolls over and lets these Hornets come into the complex and push them around once again. Toby Cram, one of those players we mentioned early on in this game, getting a hat trick, shorthanded goal, and just managed to find some space, found the puck right in the slot, coughed up from the BFA defenders, and just buried it top corner over Telfer. And that's a short-handed goal right there by Cram. Well, unfortunately, I don't know if Prim really got the assist as it looked like the BFA defender copped it up. But either way, it's a 5-3 game in favor of Essex. Just so. sucking the air out of the complex on that, that goal right there. Yeah, that's that's a tough one right there. So just about halfway left in the third, 5-3 Essex. Short time away from going to the state championship to face the winner of Rice and Colchester. Certainly give them credit off the short rest and the double overtime win against Spalding. They showed up here tonight. That's true, Cam. They have just been relentless. Good pass there by Wilbur to get a Schreindorfer down low. Duplon calling for a line change. It's gonna give Essex plenty of time to get something going the other way. Puck ah. broken up. Merrill with it now. Plenty of space. Looking to find someone. How is that not as as Holding. Merrill dragged down? How is that not a Wow, call? there we go. Call right there. Oh! And an opportunity in front. I don't know how Merrill was not Paul, whoever well, dragged he, him down, he was being held on right, the back. Right, right, that's what I thought too, but uh, either way, I think Essex is going to the box. Um, I think they saw the call once it was after, uh, looks like number six, Dubray is going to the box. Yeah, that, I, 
And yeah. if this is going to be a time to capitalize and Have get back to. in this game, this must, is it. Must. And Prim and, has not and, left the ice very much in this game. No. He either plays a uh, regular shift or he plays penalty kill, power play. And you can't even say that penalties was a difference maker for the Bob Whites because Essex now with just as many, many penalties, I believe. I like this timeout right now called by Toby. Yeah, no, I think give your guys some rest, try to draw some stuff up and uh, get a good play going because so far Essex has really taken, taken hold of these uh, penalty kills and done very well to kill off these power plays for BFA. And if you're BFA, you have gotta capitalize here with 6.35 to go in the third period, you're down by two goals. Make this more of a game because Cram has done very well in this game, getting a hat trick. Yeah, he's played great. And he is Credit a phenomenal player. No, just like I said, I mean, just super impressed with what Essex has brought to the table. Again, Essex so good at slowing down right. the pace of play. You don't need to go a million miles an hour at this level. Uh, you get guys like the Prim and the Sisters and, and Hemingway up top, and then next thing you know, you find a Cram in the slot who can score. Well, that's the thing. You got a two minute power play. You got two minutes to get a goal here. So work the puck around, don't rush it. Find your best opportunity to get a good shot on net. That's what BFA needs to do here. Slow it down. And BFA able, trying to hold the zone, can't. Thought they were gonna be able to do so. Beauregard stretching the ice. You got Hemingway and Savoy having words here. BFA Ooh. with it, tripped up there is Savoy. Puck comes out, Audi with it now. Ethan, the defenseman. Puck thrown down in. Come on, boys. Oh, puck comes up top to Cram. He's gonna have plenty of room to get it out. Ooh, almost hits the netting. 115. Second power play out for the Bob Whites. I mean, these Essex Hornets already killed off a minute. Let's go. I don't know if I love this power play combination, but we'll see. Merrill with it. Uh, caught up on the blue line, and Essex able to get it out. Force here with it, one on two. Shot there on net. Well, not on net, but Telfer there to glove it. And a defensive face off with 521, 46 seconds left on the power play, certainly not what you're looking for. Shots 23 to 20 in favor of BFA. But Essex really poured on the shots in the second period. Puck comes out, Hemingway holding it in. BFA with it, Schreindorfer trying to push it up. Can't do so, Puck comes over to Frady's, Frady's with space. One on one on Cram, tries to make a move, can't make his way around him. Merrill there to pick it up. Held in by Schreindorfer. Schreindorfer slides it over to Webb. Webb shot there, rebound in front. Oh, wide open net! Tries to shoot it. Oh, oh. and he just misses it. Oh! Wow, another penalty for Essex. Looks like Hemingway's going to the box for interference. And now Essex has had more penalties than BFA. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. Hemingway so really took his, his man team. down, roughing. You can tell Essex is getting tired by these penalties. Right. But fortunately for them, they're up two, right, exactly. less than five minutes. They're probably gonna have an opportunity to score an empty netter and seal the game. Right. So you certainly like them to close out. But Essex, four penalties in this third period. And it, <laughs> BFA's got to take advantage here. Come on, four minutes and 45 seconds to go. This first unit's been so close. Colin up top to his brother, Ethan. Ethan, shot there on that screenshot. Oh, oh man. I don't think that will come out as it was deflected up and out of play. They like that long shot from the point. I don't know if they're looking for a tip or yeah. I, they don't really 
managed to find a guy for either a one-timer or uh, you know some backdoor play. Well, I'd like them to sink a little bit more in and right. then push it over, exactly. suck the defense up, and then get the off-angle shot. There's a shot on just wider than that. Colin Audi with it, rebound in front. Oh, and Essex picks up the rebound, throws it all the way down. 130 left on the power play. Hemingway. As Hemingway in the box. Oh boy. Yeah, I can't have that as Ethan Audi will take an icing for BFA. 405. BFA not in a good spot whatsoever. Essex getting it down low in the offensive zone. Again, they're on the penalty kill. Already a shorthanded goal here in the third period. Matt Merrill with speed, skating through the zone. One too many moves. Essex going to break that up all day. Yeah, they're not going to let Merrill no. throw on that. Oh, oh boy. Man, that's, that's, that's chipped out. That's going to kill even more time. It's just hard work from the Essex penalty kill there. Had to have a goal here for BFA just to give him a chance last minute with a one goal differential to pull the goalie. Webb with it now in the slot, pushes it back to Freddy's. Ah. Yeah, Freddy's not taking his time there. Careless pass there to Schreindorfer. BFA I mean, will have to regroup. He's got time. Shot there, not the shot you needed. Why not set up some more time? Wood giving chase. Good job by Brady's to keep it in. Rafferty leaving it there for Wood. Slides it over, Ethan Audi with it. Shot there, just in front, Wood with it. Fans on it. Wow. Puck comes out, and That's Essex. It. Kills it off again. Yep, and Essex looks like they're on their way to Gutterson Fieldhouse. Wood unable to hold on to it in front of the net. Sincata going the other way, two on two, and shot on net, and that's all you need. 228. I mean, and this is a team gonna pull the goalie. Good luck, I mean, it's just, you're between a rock and a hard place right now with a two goal lead for Essex with 2.28 to go, but we'll see what happens. BFA could pop one in quick right here. They'd be in a lot better position. So puck in the neutral zone. Wood gets it over to Johnson. Johnson looking for some boy, can't find him. You know, and Essex gave BFA an opportunity to get back in this game. They could not capitalize. Yeah, I mean, four unanswered goals for Essex, as mentioned. Give them credit. Just under two minutes. Should be plenty of time to get things done, especially with the leadership of the Essex coaching staff. You know, and if you're a BFA senior, do or die. Here looks for a shot there. Could be an opportunity going the other way. Cram for his fourth goal. Move. And wow, that hits the bar. No goal, but Cram looking to cement the Bob Whites there. And shot on that and a glove save by Telfer. 126. You know, Cram, beautiful move going in on a breakaway. Little, you know, we've seen that leg kick move, that little hesitation to drop the goalie down, make him hesitate, and he just managed to bury a puck into the post there. Graham almost getting his fourth goal of the game, and 126 to go with Essex up by two. And this is uh, this is a tough time. Yeah, great, uh, great time out there with 126, knowing you've got a tired staff. Uh, I, I know Essex kind of, like you said, very disciplined taking some penalties there in the third period, certainly giving BFA the opportunity to get back in. BFA mentioned great team, very deep, struggled to score against these better skating teams. Right. See it here again tonight. Uh, really love that time out there by line, just knowing that his team's tuckered. He played, well, 
you know, uh, three periods and two overtimes probably equates to four periods in total, day and a half rest. And here his squad is a minute 26 away, up 5-3 against the Bob Whites at Collins Pearly. And uh, yeah, that, that, that call to take Booten out and put Foster right, in. I wasn't sure how that was gonna end up. And it's- Well, real. why would you not start the senior goaltender to begin with? If they split time, right. wouldn't you think you give it to the more mature goaltender in a game like this? But making the call at a good time, certainly didn't end up costing them. Yeah, I thought I didn't know how the decision was gonna go, you know, putting a cold goaltender in for the second period, but uh, it's been a good decision by line. So Merrow going the other way, shoots it well wide of the net. That's a perfect situation with Webb kind of streaking down where they could have tried to find a two-on-one opportunity, but again, with about a minute left, not gonna be a difference maker. Need an absolute miracle here late. Getting bunched up, too. Yeah, puck in the neutral zone. BFA fans starting to empty out. Webb with it now in the slot. Quick move there. Leaves up top to Frady. Slides it over to Ethan Audi. Shot there. Ooh, and that just misses the far post. Slides it back up top. Frady's gets it down to Merrill. Shot there. Rebound in front. Penalty. Uh, I think he's it on BFA or? Oh, it looks like uh, number 26 is going to the box again, uh, yeah. Monaghan, but that, I don't know if it's gonna matter. No, it's not. But, but Essex with. Might be a good opportunity, you know. How many penalties has Essex had? Two, three, four, five, that's fifth. One, two, three, and four, six. five, well, six yeah. total for the game. But hey, BFA's got the goalie pulled. Let's see, this is the best opportunity. Puck held in the zone, Brady's with it now. Shot Jeez. there, deflected, good block shot by Force here. Slides it over to Audi. Audi shot on net, just misses the near side post. 10 seconds left, Essex is gonna do it. They'll face the winner of Rice and Colchester, set to take action tomorrow as we hit zeros. And wow. Essex with a huge victory. See you guys. Huge victory by Essex, well-deserved. And once again, I hate to say it, I hate to say it, but Essex coming in, slapping BFA around after that first period. Not sure what the mindset was coming into the second. You know, we certainly had mentioned that they had taken a handful of penalties, but Essex had a total of five in the third period. Yeah. BFA still unable to score. Yeah. Essex really not staying very composed in the third period, taking five penalties, but hey, it doesn't matter if you can't score on the power play, uh, you know, being down of, on a, or being on a five on three, a five on four. BFA just couldn't get anything going. They couldn't get the puck in the net. Essex was blocking shots, getting in front of everything. I thought Boone played a good first period, and I thought uh, Foster played an even better two periods. Putting him in was a great decision by line, and you gotta give it to the Essex coaching staff for a game like that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, nothing against Essex, but I know enough hockey to match these teams up, and BFA certainly deeper, but that doesn't always matter. Uh, Essex, more disciplined, well, not tonight, but uh, you know, smarter team at times. Right. Uh, taking their time, creating uh, opportunities, passing lanes, shooting lanes, uh, their efficiency on scoring opportunities. I think if you match that up with BFA is night and day. Yeah. Um, their ability to show up here at the complex. Uh, BFA has struggled here, uh, quarterfinal, semifinal matchup. I'm not sure what it is, um, but have struggled to close out the big games. Um, you know, I certainly don't want to take anything away from this team. It's been a pleasure. Uh, we talk about the seniors, they've been yeah. great. They've got two state championships under their belt. Right. Um, but it's a disappointment. Yeah, I was, I was very uh, happy with how BFA came into this game. Really, you know, had their foot on the gas in that first period. Um, you know, it, it looked great when the game started, but things just really tumbled downhill as the game went on, and Essex really 
showed why they are such a good team and why they're going to the finals because they're deserving of it at this point. And uh, we say it time and time again, they're a well-coached team. Um, whether or not they took penalties, big deal. They killed yeah. them off, and, and that's the team that they are. They can they can kill off those penalties. So, um, yeah, it was a pleasure doing it this year again, and, uh, we'll, you know, hope to be back next year for, you know, a new season. So, As disappointed as I am as the outcome of the year, these boys were great, another great year. But I think the more important thing is we got to take hats off to Toby Duclon. Yeah. 32 years at BFA, nine state championships, really has groomed these young adults yep. into men and prepare them for better things in life. Right. And we certainly want to respect him. I know the program's going to be left in good hands with Ben Roberts. Certainly excited to see what he does. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know, Jason. I, I was not expecting that. But, you know, we, were, we, were, we met beforehand with some of the parents, and the one thing we said is, if BFA gets out early and they start playing this defensive game and sitting back and, and not pressuring and, and not trying to use their speed and their ability as far as skill through the neutral zone, Essex will catch up. Right. And, and, and they did that tonight. Penalties or not, because Essex took five penalties yeah. in the third period. I know. It's just, it's crazy. And... and you know, I don't want to say BFA necessarily took their foot off the gas. I think Essex just came out after the second period or after the first period and played a phenomenal second and third period. They just played better hockey than BFA. Yeah. They were a better team than BFA in the second and third period. And there's no arguing that. They BFA just struggled to get the puck in the net. And yeah. and Essex got a couple bounces. They got that shorthanded goal, which really put a nail in the coffin. Um, for BFA, and it's just unfortunate. And you know, we really could keep is. we could keep going on about this, yeah. but I, I I'm just bummed, man. I'm bummed. Yeah, I'm super bummed. But no, hats off to Essex. Congratulations, what yeah. they were able to do with short rest, double overtime. Sorry, parents, family, and friends of Chittenden County did not look good against Spalding whatsoever. But what they did here tonight, coming into St. Albans, rising to the occasion, taking advantage of their opportunities, cram, hats off to cram. I'd go literally. and shake the kid's hand right <laughs> now if literally. I could. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, should have had a fourth goal on no, the breakaway know, yeah. that just nicked the bar. He's a good player. Um, so congrats to them. I know they were seeking vengeance off of last year's um, loss to BFA in the championship with a senior, junior loaded team. Yep. Um, so again, congratulations to them. Let's take a moment to thank our sponsors, Northwestern Orthopedics, Collins Pearly Sports and Fitness Center, Barrett Ford, JC Image, Handy Toyota, and Corporate Outfitters. If your business would like to be a sponsor for Northwest Access TV sports coverage this winter, please contact 802-782-8676. And just a reminder, Northwest Access TV is a nonprofit organization. If you're enjoying the sports coverage throughout the year, please consider making a donation just visit northwestaccess.tv backslash donation. Um, again, we'll get to our Northwest Access Player of the Game, sponsored by Corporate Outfitters. Essex set to take on the winner of number one, Rice, and number four, Colchester, uh, with a slate tomorrow down at Cairns at 3 o'clock. That game will be next Friday down at Gutterson Fieldhouse. Right. Um, live for the moment because that's what it's all about. I mean, yeah. you and I are grinding on a day-to-day uh, in the real world, and, and like I told my brother and, and the Colinades of the world and some of these guys I talk with, enjoy this because these are important memories. So, you know, good for Essex to have that opportunity again and, and, and get another championship. Um, so, you know, player of the game, um, you know, a lot of guys have already gotten it this year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, other than <laughs> – other than the first period, I, I, I don't really know if anyone's a player of the game. I don't know where you're at. I'll yeah. give you my opinion and let you decide. Yeah, go ahead. Where I'm going to go is I feel like that Lanfear shot from the point that he got the assist on, Wood was able to tip, on, tip in, was huge for this team early. As mentioned, Lanfear played third line for the, this Bob White's team last year on offense came back to play defense knowing that they didn't have the depth 
uh, for the most part, played pretty good defensively, not necessarily that being his role. Um, so, you know, for a night of losses, looking aside, senior defenseman, uh, has been a utility player. That's who I feel I would probably get it to, but maybe there's someone else out there no, you feel more deserving. You're totally correct on that, and he, he was one of the guys that I really um, – you know, Made put, some smart passes right, tonight. Right. He was one of the guys I've really put my finger on when I was looking back on the game because, you know, he took that shot from the point. Borgard fed it to Lanfear. Lanfear had that great shot, nice and low, to find Wood, you know, in the slot to tip that home. And that put them up 3-1. to one. And I think that really could have been the difference maker if BFA just played a better game yeah. um, going into the second and third period, which, unfortunately, they didn't. And I hate to say that, but um, – yeah, overall, I think they just had a tough game, and Essex just came to play after the after the first period. So um, tonight's Northwest Access Player of the Game, and our last one for the year goes to Ezra Lanfear, the senior. Um, and, yeah, he's just a great player. He's a two-way player for this team. You can move him back and forth, move him to forward, move him to defense, and he's well-deserving of this tonight. And, um, yeah, I just want to, you know, say good luck to all the seniors. Yeah, and, and, me too. And Toby, 32 years. Um, what a career, and, uh, you know, there's nothing more you can say that. He's just molded these guys into the, you know, the men that they are today, and yeah. uh, best of luck to him. I know he'll still be around, but, um, yeah, I think it's, it was just a tough game. Yeah, it's been a pleasure watching the seniors, all of them, all of yep. you guys. Um, it's been a joy. Jason and I have called you guys for the past three years collectively together. Yep. Um, like I mentioned, I watched a lot of them growing up playing through the Youth Association. Um, just want to let you know that we're proud of all you guys. Tough loss tonight. Unfortunately, that's part of the heartache. You get in a rivalry game like this with a packed house. Unfortunately, it's all about momentum shifts, and those penalties in the second period by BFA shifted in Essex's favor, and by that point, penalties are not in the third by Essex. That end up being the difference maker. Yeah, for sure. And uh, last but not least, thanks to the you know the camera yeah. staff and Northwest yeah. Access, uh, Paul Schneider, Northwest Access, and all the people that give their time yeah. to uh, make this program what it is because um, it really does make a difference for the community. And I think a lot of people enjoy it, and we're glad yeah. to be a part of it. So yeah, me too. And I, I've enjoyed working with you. Yeah, I want to let you sure. know that your hard work and stuff like that. I apologize for the folks at home. I know I get obnoxious and whatnot. I try to lighten it up a little <laughs> bit. But um, at the end of the day, it's all good and fun. Just happy everybody got to watch a good semifinal hockey game. Yep. As I mentioned earlier, I think the winner of this game is going to be the state champion. Um, Rice, certainly a good squad, but certainly not the experience that BFA and Essex have down at uh, Gutterson. So we'll, uh, you know, we'll be, we'll be wishing the best um, for Essex in their game to come. Um, you know, as Rice or Colchester potentially, but um, it's been a great year. And, uh, you know, hey. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. You and, and Thank you to all the viewers, too. Yeah, with that being said, Cameron Wood, alongside Jason Bliss, your 21-22 season concludes. Number three, Essex, beating BFA for the third time this year, 5-3, to three, advancing to the state championship. We'll be back next year, folks. We appreciate the support. Good night. Thank you. Good night.